and kicks off its season of SWAC coverage from Alcorn State as the Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions visit the Alcorn Braves. ESPNU HD Thursday night primetime kicks off its season of SWAC coverage from Alcorn State as the Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions visit the Alcorn Braves. Two first-year coaches look for their first career wins in this all-important matchup as a Washington Redskin legend will try and trump an Alcorn State alum and former SWAC champion. ESPNU College Football Primetime is next. at Jack Spink Stadium on the campus of Alcorn State University in Lorman, Mississippi for the Southwestern Athletic Conference matchup as the Golden Lions of the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff come in to take on the Braves of Alcorn State. Hello everyone, Charlie Neal along with my partner Jay Walker. Welcome to Thursday Night Primetime College Football. And Jay, this is a game that's the story of two first-year head coaches who are still looking for their first career wins. The further you go into the football season without getting that first victory on the year, then you start to create a tremendous obstacle that becomes a distraction for your football team. Look for these two coaches to eagerly try and get that first win underneath their belt tonight. Arkansas Pine Bluff will try to get that first win with a running back by the name of Mickey Dean, who had a fantastic game a week ago against Central Arkansas when he ran for 129 yards. And Mickey Dean, you're talking about a running back that has all the right moves. He's got the ability to run tough in between the two tackles, and he also has that game-changing ability to hit you with the long, explosive run that can give your team tremendous momentum. If Mickey Dean can put up the type of performances he has thus far in the season tonight, look for the Gold Lions to have a good chance at getting their first victory on the year. And defensively, Alcorn State will try to counter that running attack of Mickey Dean with a linebacker by the name of Lee Robinson. Lee Pretty Ro good one. Lee Robinson is special. He's yeah. got NFL scouts here looking at his talent. If you talk about Lee Robinson playing well this evening, he's going to have to help the offense create some turnovers and help them get on the board earlier. When you've got an offense that's struggling, you need your captain on the defense to come up with big plays. Look for Lee Robinson to have a fantastic game this evening. Well, Arkansas Pine Bluff won the last three meetings with Alcorn, but the Braves are hoping to give Coach Ernest Jones his first win. We'll be back to Lorman, Mississippi for the SWAC matchup and the opening kickoff in just a moment. The Southwestern. Back here at Jack Spink Stadium in Alcorn State, Mississippi. This Southwestern Athletic Conference matchup just about to get underway between Alcorn State. They're wearing the dark jerseys and the gold numbers. They're the home team. The gold jerseys, the lighter jerseys being won, worn by the visitors from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. And this matchup between these two squads about to get underway. The most interesting thing about this particular game. Jay, is this doesn't count in the conference standings. I think that's good, but I don't agree with it. You know, both these coaches like it because they one team has already played a game and it didn't count, so they're both undefeated in conference play and they both will remain undefeated in conference play. But the football player in me says every game, every team you play in your conference, that game should count. So Arkansas Pine Bluff will get the ball to start the game. You're looking at Alexander Oakley. He is the kicker. He's a senior out of San Jacinto, California. And he'll be kicking it off for the Braves of Alcorn. The fourth game of the season for both of these squads. A deep man for Arkansas Pine Bluff, Mario Howard, who leads the SWAC in kickoff returns. He's averaging 828.8 yards per return. And this one about to get underway here. Welcome to Thursday night primetime college football in HD right here on ESPNU and it's going to go out of bounds at about the 20 yard line so not a good kickoff for Mr. Olfke who lets it go out of bounds and uh, good field position will be gained by the Golden Lions of the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff if they decide to take the penalty or take the play decline the penalty they'll get the ball. Well, they decide they're going to, are they going to re-kick it or are they going to take it? They're going to take it. Jonathan Moore is the quarterback for Arkansas Pine Bluff. He is a senior. He's from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. You see the stats on him so far this year. Just one touchdown. 
that he's thrown but he's also thrown four interceptions he's been struggling in terms of the offensive line in terms of them protecting him this year and the thing about Jonathan the more he's a senior he's battle tested so he was a quarterback when Pine Bluff played in the swag championship game two seasons ago so he's been through the ringer he's been with the ups and the downs and look for him to try and get this team on track for conference play and we talked about Mickey Dean we'll also see Martell Mallett Mickey Dean is the lone back in the backfield Weber's the man in motion number 86 and it's a play action and now in trouble is more and he's going to be sacked and we talked about the fact of protecting the quarterback just a moment ago Jay and on the first play they come up with a sack as we look at the backs and receivers for Arkansas Pine Bluff Mickey Dean we talk about talked about him leading the swack in rushing Raymond Weber leads the team in receiving with 16 as far as the offensive line is concerned there are three seniors up there in Billings Lowe and Portia but they must do a better job in protecting the quarterback and not giving up those sacks who right now are ranked 105th in the nation out of 118 teams in sacks allowed it is second down after the loss of seven, second and 17, now Mickey Dean gets the ball, gets across the 35, back to the 36. So gains about uh, six yards, make that three or four yards on that run. Let's look at the defense for the Braves of Alcorn State. Morrison Fields on the line are freshmen, and Lewis and Cobb are sophomores up there. As far as the linebackers are concerned, we already talked about Lee Robinson. He's the leading tackler on this team, and NFL is up there. As far as the linebackers are concerned, we already talked about Lee Robinson. He's the leading tackler on this team, an NFL prospect in the secondary, is led by preseason all swack cornerback Roderick Williams. It is third down. Third and about 14. Screen. Not a good looking screen, but. Mickey Dean made something out of nothing and he's down no fumble on the play but way short of a first down. They actually have what they wanted there. If you call a screen you want the defense to be in the blitz formation. So with Alcorn State bringing pressure in the blitz had that ball not hung in the air so much Dean wouldn't have had to wait for that ball. And he could have picked up the first down yardage. So Arkansas Pine Bluff will punt it away with Duran Gaines, sophomore out of Chicago. He's from Simeon High there. He'll punt it. Left-footed kicker. Make that Carlos Reyes. Gaines is not here, so Reyes is doing all the kicking tonight. And now trying to get something going on the return for Alcorn is Roderick Williams, the secondary player. And a 49-yard punt. And he gets a 15 yard return and the ball will be spotted at the 21 yard line. So Alcorn gets the ball for the first time tonight. First down and 10. Tim Buckley is the quarterback for the Braves of Alcorn State. The stats on him and he's a junior. He's from Madison, Mississippi. Three touchdown passes for him in three games, but he's thrown seven interceptions. So he'll have to do a better job of putting the ball in the air. They will go with a spread offense. You know, it's a Empty backfield. He's working out of the shotgun on first and ten, and he throws it in the flat, incomplete, trying to get it to Elliot Moore coming off the right side. The backs and receivers for the Braves of Alcorn State. Devaris Pilcher is the running back. Emmanuel Arsenault is their best receiver. They're going to try to get him the ball tonight. He has the size and speed in the offensive line. They're starting three true freshmen in Nathan Fears, Isaac Williams, and Jerry Salas. It is second down and 10. Just underway here at Alcorn. This time they give the ball off to DeVaris Pilcher, trying to go off to the left side. Let's look at the defense for the Golden Lions of Arkansas Pine Bluff down on the line. Ladarius Anthony he is a preseason All Southwestern Athletic Conference selection. The linebackers. Tim Turner leads the team in, and the SWAC in tackles. And defensive back is a veteran group. And they're led by senior Stuart Franks. Third down after a gain of two. Third and eight. From the shotgun again. 
Buckley decides he's going to take off and run, gets the first down, and out of bounds at about the 38-yard line right in front of the Arkansas Pine Bluff bench. Had an opportunity to see the mobility of Tim Buckley going into the football season. There was a quarterback controversy. Who was going to be the starting quarterback down here at Alcorn State? And Tim Buckley ultimately won because of the decision-making and the athleticism he brings to the offense as you see the great mobility and the scramble to pick up the first down. Tony Hobson was the other man he was in the battle for with Jay, a uh, senior out of Jackson, Mississippi from Jim Hill High. First down and 10. Play action, this time coming back to the near side to Moore. Elliott Moore has some room down the sideline, and Elliott Moore cuts it back, still on his feet, and finally dropped it in Arkansas Pine Bluff territory at about the 35-yard line. So a pretty good run that time after the catch by Elliott Moore, the senior, out of Jackson, Mississippi. Good for 27 yards. Yeah, great job. And take a look at your right tackle there, number 72, Jerry Silas, coming there and just getting the body in the way. And that gave the ability for Elliott Moore to get outside of that big right tackle. Beautiful design and great execution on behalf of the Braves. First down and 10 now. Alcorn moving the ball. This is their first possession of the evening. On the counter, back inside. They hand it off to Pilcher, and Pilcher is down inside the 30, but we have a, pers a flag down. That's going to be a hold. Anthony Johnson is our referee tonight. So that'll move the ball back. Ernest Jones, the head coach of the Braves of Alcorn, his first season, still looking for his first career win, played his collegiate ball here, only played two years, came from a junior college before matriculating here to Alcorn State and played against you, Jay. He, he could play. <laughs> he, he, was, he was a good player, and, you know, I think he's becoming a phenomenal coach. Talking about a guy that came to Alcorn from the University of Cincinnati. He's one of the rising stars in the coaching profession. And here we go to a little bubble screen to the far sideline, and they have it complete to Edward Johnson, and Johnson gets back a good chunk of the yards they lost on the penalty all the way down to the 30. There's Edward Johnson, sophomore out of Natchez. There's Monty Coleman, played on... Uh, few Super Bowl teams with the Washington Redskins 18 yards on the last play he was a pretty good player you know I'm sure he uh, was really elated to see two of his teammates going to the Pro Football Hall of Fame this year and Art Monk and Daryl Green was it route 281 they called yeah. it Green and Monk and I mean that era of Redskin football was one of the best eras that you'll see any pro franchise have second Look down out. and it's a fumble and it's going to be picked up by it may be picked up by Arkansas Pine Bluff and it is finally maybe and it is finally picked up by <laughs> Arkansas Pine Bluff somebody finally got it, and that's Dorn who came up with it for Arkansas Pine Bluff Jared Dorn the junior from Pine Bluff Arkansas let's see who made the hit on the quarterback yeah, that's John keep the outside keep, linebacker right. coming in unblocked and got a clean shot on the quarterback Breakdown and protection. You see that ball. That's why it's not Chase Brown. It takes those funny bounces, and you just can't field it cleanly. Had they been able to, that would have been an easy touchdown. But instead, they've got to settle for a fumble recovery and giving their offense great field position. First down and 10 at the 29. Keeping it on the ground. Here's Mickey Dean bouncing it to the outside. But the pursuit of the Alcorn defense. Pretty good. Let's look at that fumble again, Jay. Yeah, you see the offensive line do slide protection. So that means the end man on the line of scrimmage, the quarterback has to know. He's not accounted for. Your offensive line's going to the right. And you see everybody try and pick up this ball. It's like a hot potato on the ground with number 90, with Darius Anthony having the best opportunity to pick it up cleanly. But Jared Dorn did a good job of just falling on the ball. So it is second down. We'll call it five after the... Gained by Mickey Dean. He's been the lone running back tonight for the Golden Lions of Pine Bluff. And he has the ball again, trying to get to the first down marker. He's going to be about a yard shy, but a penalty marker is down on the field. Coming into the ball game in terms of penalties, Arkansas Pine Bluff is averaging just about 49 yards in penalties per contest. 
They've had uh, trying to wait for our referee. Here's the offense. Five yard penalty, second down. So it's an illegal shift on Arkansas Pine Bluff. Even though they've been sacked a lot, they've been pr doing pretty good in this drive and moving the ball with the running game. I think so, and that's what Arkansas Pine Bluff wants to do is run the football. But what you notice, when you've got offenses that struggle, it's like when they start to get some momentum and move down the field, then they kill themselves with getting penalties. And the illegal shift, that's a mental error. That's not a physical mistake. That's a mental error, and you just can't have that if you want to have a productive offense. It is second down now. Second and ten after the penalty. Eye formation this time. Play action. More incomplete on the near side. He was trying to hit one of the backs coming out of the backfield. That's Brandon Hubbard, number 48. Let's look at your game plan for tonight, Jay. No, this is what the teams want to do. You talk about Arkansas Pine Bluff. They like to run. You've know, got a defensive guy that's the head coach. He wants to run the ball and kill the clock. And also on defense, they want to pressure this Alcorn quarterback into making mistakes. Alcorn State, they got to get their best wide receiver, Arsenal, some touches. Emmanuel Arsenal, they're going to move him around all over the field. And against this running attack, they're going to load the box, get as many men close to the line of scrimmage to try and neutralize Mickey Dean. Third down conversions, 19% for Pine Bluff this year. Let's see what they do here. Now we have some movement. We have a couple flags. And it's step. False start on the offense, number 68. Five-yard penalty, third down. And those are the things they have to avoid. You know, how does an offense average only nine points per contest? By the mental errors. I think any coach would tell you, if you hold every now and then, you get beat physically. But it's the mental errors that you must eliminate in order to become a good offensive football team. Now you see Monty Coleman on the sideline. Jonathan Porsche was the man guilty of the false start there. And it breaks a third and 15 situation for Pine Bluff. So they're going in the opposite direction that they'd like to go as Moore goes back to pass, throws, has a man out there, has a complete, and stepping down the sideline and finally out of bounds at about the 13-yard line. He has a complete to Anthony Abrams, a sophomore out of Simeon High in Chicago, number 85. Finally run out of bounds by Roderick Williams, number this, one. And this is a good throw here by Jonathan Moore. Throws it right on the money. And take a look at the tightrope back here by Abraham along that sideline. And he picked up five extra yards by having great concentration and balance to tiptoe along the sideline. So it's first and ten, the ball resting just outside after the 24-yard gain, resting outside the 10-yard line, so they can pick up a first down without scoring. First down and 10. Here's Mickey Dean. Mickey Dean at the 6, at the 4, down to the 4-yard line, and finally brought down by Lee Robinson, number 56, the senior from Gloucester, Mississippi, team's leading tackler. You get a good look at Mickey Dean right there. You see his frame well put together, 5'11", 220 pounds. He can be a bruiser, but on that last run, you also saw the agility to make the first guy in the hole miss and to get positive yardage. Ezekiel Smith is the up back in the eye. Mickey Dean, the second back on second down. Dean again on the move, and he's down to the two-yard line. Dean on the carry. Mickey Dean to the two. Caesar Cobb there on the stop, number 58, a walk on. In fact, his father is the in charge of the military science program here on the campus at Alcorn State. And what a pleasant surprise that must be to a coaching staff like Ernest Jones. When you come here and you've got a walk on, that ends up starting for you. So that means, you know, hey, you've got somebody young that you can grow the program around, give them some scholarship money, and find a little diamond in the rough in Caesar Cobb. Third down, and we'll call it one. Mickey Dean hit in the backfield before he could really get ahead of steam going. And the first man to hit him there was number 22 defensively for, for uh, Alcorn State. That's Corey McLaren, a senior out of Collins, Mississippi. There he is, number 22 there. We talked about how they want to crowd the line of scrimmage and take a look at Corey McLaurin on the end of the scrimmage. He comes there unblocked and has the speed to get in the backfield and to make the tackle for a loss from the cornerback position. That's not easy. You don't see that too often. But one thing about Corey McLaurin, he's one of those guys that just has this gritty, tough attitude. He never gives up on a play. 20-yard field goal coming from Carlos Reyes, Jr., 
He's one for two so far this year. And now flags go down. Did the clock play clock ran out on him. We got a delay of game. So instead of a 20 yard field goal, let's make it a 25 yard attempt. His only make was a 34 yarder. He did that against Central Arkansas. He missed a 42 yarder. And that was uh, in the season opener against Monticello. And we're still in the first quarter, and that's the third mental error by this Arkansas Pine Bluff offense already in this contest. Now, they probably will get away with it because one thing about field goal kicking with the wide hashes in college football, sometimes you don't want to be kicking from the left hash from the three or four yard line. You like to get away from the goal line so the angle of the kick is not as dramatic as it would be. John Heflin was the kicker of record a year ago for Arkansas Pine Bluff, who was 18 of 20 of PATs, hit a 45 yarder, and was 10 of 17 in field goals. And there's Monty Coleman expressing some dissatisfaction about the, the, the play clock. And you can see him, he's pointing up at the play clock and having a very animated discussion with Anthony Johnson. And is not characteristic to see Monty get upset, is it? I, I think what he's trying to do is establish, hey, you're, you're coming in here on the road and you want to establish with the referees that you want this game to be called fairly. Now, I really do think that he's not necessarily worried about his field goal kick or not making this kick because, as I stated earlier, the kick becomes easier. But what do you want to do when you're the head coach on the road? You want to make sure that the officials realize we don't want any home cooking down here. <laughs> we just want the game called fair and cleanly. So what is that home cooking? Down here in the south, that means something smothered. You can smother. I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Reyes numbers. 34 yarder. He did that against Central Arkansas. He's a left footed kicker. From Anaheim, California. This will be a 35 yard attempt. Andre Kirkland. Make that a 25 yard attempt. Correct. And that is good. Good from 25 yards out. And Arkansas Pine Bluff takes advantage of a turnover by the Braves of Alcorn. They converted into three points after the sack of the quarterback caused a fumble. Picked up by Dorn. And we'll be back to Warbin in a miss. Approaching target. ESPNU College Football Primetime brought to you by eHarmony.com. Are you ready to fall in love? 538 remaining. And we're here at the campus of Alcorn State University, E.E. E. Simmons, the gymnasium, named after former athlete here and former president, and that is his grandson, who's a member of the football team, Michael Simmons. He is from Jackson, Mississippi. Transferred from Northeast Community College, 5'11", 179 pounder. I always say down here in SWAC territory, they believe in keeping it in the family. And he was recruited to play at Hawaii. Interesting and story. Somehow we wound up here, right? I think he realized that June Jones had moved on from Hawaii, went to SMU, and he decided to move on as well and come down here where he's got some tradition. This is McLaren on the return. McLaren making a pretty good return for the Braves. Still on his feet. And they're having trouble bringing him down as he's across the 30-yard line, close to the 35. They'll mark it at about 33, 34. And a little pushing and shoving going on down there as McLaren finally gets up. Seeing you out of Collins, Mississippi on the return. So the Alcorn Braves, who were moving the ball pretty good the last time they had it, but uh, quarterback Buckley was hit pretty good with the rush blindsided <laughs> if you want to say it and uh, lost the ball and the Golden Lions were able to recover and convert it to three points. They could have done a little better. They struggled down there when they got into the red zone. But it is first down and 10 at their own 34 yard line for Alcorn. Buckley to Pilcher and nothing doing that time as he was hit immediately by Hintz. Aaron Hintz senior number 92. He is from Pine Bluff getting the start at the tackle spot tonight. 
Take a look at Aaron Pence here controlling the line of scrimmage, beating his man off the ball and taking on the double team and catching a running back in the backfield. And defensive coordinators love it when you get defensive interior linemen making tackles behind the line of scrimmage or at the line of scrimmage means that you're starting to seize control of the line of scrimmage and neutralize the opponent's running attack. No gain on the play. Pilcher in motion, second and ten. This pass out in the flat is complete. And on the reception is Arsenault, so he finally makes his first catch of the year. They say is the best receiver on this team, but he came into tonight's game, Jay, with only two receptions all season long and one touchdown. That touchdown was a 56-yarder against Southeast Louisiana. And let's give credit to the offensive staff at Alcorn State, realizing that they weren't getting the ball in their best playmaker's hands. So they came into the night's game plan saying, we're going to move Arsenal all over the field and find ways just to get him touches because we haven't been doing a good job of coaches of putting him in the best position to succeed. 11-yard gain, first and 10. Pilcher trying to make something happen, gets through the hole, spins, and finally knocked down, but not before he gets into Pine Bluff territory. On the stop defensively was Kevin Thornton for Pine Bluff. Oh, wow, what a great job by the offensive line, and I'm really impressed early on with the right tackle, Jerry Salas. Once again, Britain great seal blocks on the outside, so he's winning that one-on-one -on -one battle against his defensive lineman, Ladarius Anthony. Take a look at Salas here, number 72. He's just one of those babies you're talking about, just a freshman, but right now he's off to a heck of a start, and he seems to be winning the battle over there on the right side of the line of scrimmage. So Pilcher picked up 11 on that last one, moves the chains again, first down for the Braves. This time, a new running back in the lineup is Antoine Young for Alcorn State, number 24. He's a senior from Crystal Springs, Mississippi, his first carry of the night, and he loses about a yard. One thing that Alcorn State likes to do is have running back by commit. You could see four guys that can line up at that tailback position tonight, and Antoine Young is number two, then they'll get to number three, who will be Broomfield, then they'll get to number four, which should be Ralph, and that's what they're doing when you've got a new team, a new coach, trying to figure out who his offensive weapons are. He's still searching to see who his go-to guy is gonna be at the running back position. It is second down at 11, and that is Young in motion. Going to the left side, Buckley throwing. That's a very hard throw to make, and he's running opposite of the direction. He's a right-handed quarterback. He was trying to get the ball into the hands of Elliott Moore. We're in Alcorn State, Mississippi for the SWAC matchup. Arkansas Pine Bluff against Alcorn State. I'm Charlie Neal, along with my partner, Jay Walker, the former Howard University and NFL quarterback. Glad you could join us here for Thursday night primetime college football in HD. Some stats already in the contest between the two teams. It is third and 11. That could have been intercepted. It was a little bit behind the intended receiver down there. The intended receiver was number 89 for Alcorn State. You know, one of the things that you talked about earlier was the fact that Buckley's got a lot of a lot of steam, a lot of heat on those balls he's throwing. And when you get man-to-man -man coverage, what you want to have is crossing routes. And the key that you have to do with a crossing route, and a lot of young quarterbacks make this mistake, they try and throw the crossing route or the slant route in there as hard as they can. But you have to just throw a firm, crisp pass, and it has to be catchable. And Buckley keeps throwing those rockets, and they're very difficult to catch. Plus, he's off target. So they'll punt it. And that is Welfke, who is doing the punting. So they punt it from their 44 Pine Bluff. The bands are here, both bands. They'll be performing at hand. At eHarmony, we match you with other singles based on compatibility. And the best part is, you can review your matches absolutely free. Aren't you curious to see? 3-0 our score here on the campus of Alcorn State University, Arkansas Pine Bluff with the lead by way of a field goal and see the future stars a football today with the ESPNU delivers high school football action Friday night as Apopka, Florida Blue Darters take on the South Panola Mississippi Tigers. Old Spice High School Showcase presented by Nike on ESPNU Friday night at 8 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Should be a pretty good ball game. Mississippi 
Uh, the Tigers from Panola have won 75 straight, Jay, and uh, Apopka's no slouch either. Number one in the state of Florida, huh? Oh, I love those interstate matchups. When you can take the best from one state, we've got 50 states, and what a great time it is to be a high school athlete now in the United States when you get to play on TV and get to play state versus state. <laughs> yeah. First down and 10 now for all, uh, uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff. And nothing doing as they try to get it out to Martel Mallet. First time we've seen him carry the ball today. He's been bothered a little bit this year with a hip flexor and a bad wrist. And he is brought down immediately there by Morris. Brandon Morris, number 93 defensively. When Mallet is healthy, he and Mickey Dean make probably the best one-two punch at running back in the SWAT conference. They certainly you do. Know, they can get it done. And they've been doing it for a number of years. You know, since they were freshmen. Now they're both more experienced. So... Getting him healthy will really help this offensive team during the long run. Two years ago, Mallett was 19th in the nation in scoring. Scored 15 touchdowns between rushing and pass receiving. Helmet comes off as the ball is kept on the ground once again. And again, it was Martel Mallett. He's from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Went to Pine Bluff High. He led the SWAC in rushing two years ago, gained 1,106 yards, scored 14 rushing touchdowns. Take a look, talk about throwing leather. Take a listen to this hit. Mm. Pretty good one, huh? In, in case people think that football is just a game where you just run the ball and catch balls, well, there's some hitting that takes place in the trenches. And what I tell everybody, those little born runs you see, those two or three yard games, somebody got tore up. <laughs> it is third down, a little more than 10. And this was way overthrown. Alcorn had a better chance. That was Dorn of catching it than the receiver for Arkansas Pine Bluff, with which, which was Anthony Abrams. And a little pressure on the quarterback more. Yeah, you know, if you hit a good quarterback, then he becomes very average. And getting hit right when you release the ball, you lose your accuracy. And that's one that Roderick Williams wished he would have come up with the interception. But look at Corey McLaurin, a little active guy. He's been active all over the field tonight, making his presence felt in the backfield. Of Arkansas Pine Bluff, you can't allow a little 5 10 defensive back to get in there and get free licks on your quarterback. Roderick Williams back to receive this punt. He'll feel it at the 44 yard line, gets to the corner, has some blockers down the sideline inside the 20, and down to the 17 yard line. On the return is Roderick Williams, a junior from Monroe, Louisiana. There's a timeout on the field with a minute 21 to go. And we'll be back. Williams on the return as we come back here Arkansas Pine Bluff leading three nothing and his longest previous to this one Jay was 19 yards this good for what 27 yards 27. And setting up the wall on the outside and Robert Williams is one of the guys that has got NFL written all over him and you know on the college level the more you can do on the collegiate level shows you what you can do on the pro level let's take a look at our impact players for this game and we've got Rod Williams there the cornerback he's fantastic they're shut down corner and Arsenal we know he's got to touch the football and for Arkansas Pine Bluff Michael Dean and their quarterback, Jonathan Moore, they've got to control the offense and protect the football. Best field position of the evening for the Braves of Alcorn State. Buckley running the offense right now. You know, it was kind of interesting talking to Ernest Jones. He says they don't even have a playbook. They have to remember everything. <laughs> it's called it the phone book. The offense. phone book it's offense. All, all names and numbers. <laughs> it is first down. In trouble, lets it go, nobody home. The closest man to it was Edward Johnson, and he overthrew him. It was uh, a danger of being intercepted, a lot of pressure. That means uh, th that's almost a coverage type sack, right? Yeah, there's pressure, but he had time to get rid of the ball. And I think that's the second time in this contest. From here, I thought that Buckley made a poor decision throwing an incomplete pass instead of taking off and running and gaining positive yardage. Yardage is very tough to come by once you get inside the other team's 20-yard line and any yardage you can get. Make a decision, run, and he held on to that ball too long to end up with an incomplete pass. And I said coverage sack. He wasn't sacked, but the way, he, you know, the pressure 
that was put on him to make him throw the ball away. Here he goes again, lets it fall, and it's incomplete. This one goes incomplete, trying to get Arsenault, who was in the end zone, but he threw it behind Arsenault, who would run a slant. Wide open, he actually just missed him. The defensive back fell down when their feet got tangled, and Arsenault did a good job of keeping his balance. But once again, if you're Tim Buckley, you wonder why offenses struggle. When your coach calls a, when your offensive coordinator calls a pass and play on first down, he gets once positive yards or a completed pass. He's called back-to-back -back passes, and he's been 0 for 2, and the offense hasn't moved the ball. And now on third down, you got to come up with 10 yards in order to keep the drive alive. But it all starts with first down, getting a completion on first down. One of two and third down conversions for the Braves. Here's Buckley rolling to the left, looking to throw. Now he's in trouble, now runs out of bounds. And that's just what I'm talking about. At the 15, he only gained two yards on that play. Make that decision on first and second down to get some positive yardage. When you know your team needs 10 yards, what's the point of running and only gaining one? That's when the coach says, we'll just throw it away and we'll kick a field goal. But once they seal that thing, buy yourself some time. See, stop running. You can just settle down in the pocket and allow your wide receiver more time to get open downfield. But he predetermined he was going to run that ball and only got two yards when he had time. And that's just not good game management by the quarterback. So they gained one yard on that drive and now a field goal attempt from 33 yards out by Ofke. This one may make it. No, it doesn't. It was short and off to the right. So that one's no good. An opportunity gone awry for the Braves of Alcorn State. Actually, that was Taylor Richardson, the freshman out of Kokomo, Indiana, who attempted the field goal. He's 0 for 3 in field goals this year. Let's look at it. The pressure coming up the middle, and you wonder if that affected him, and he just pushed that ball to the right as it slid past the goal post. We talked about it earlier. Kicking college field goals can be difficult as you get closer to the end zone because of the angles and the wide hash marks. He had missed a 27-yarder against Southeast Louisiana and a 28-yarder against Grambling as Mallet gets the call and tries to turn the corner around the right side for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Martel Mallet on the carry. He said, and I talked to his former coach, uh, Mo Forte, who led them to the SWAC championship a couple years ago, the player person who Monte Coleman replaced. And, he said he and he coached some great running backs uh, at, at the pro level and he said he reminds him so much of Barry Sanders in terms of his vision. Oh, a vision. Okay. <laughs> Anytime you put Barry Sanders in a running back comparison, my first words are whoa. Hold on there, fella. Vision. All good running backs have to have the ability to identify colors. I will agree with that. And this pass is complete this time as Weber. On the reception, Raymond Weber, a sophomore out of St. Louis Christian High. Watching these two offenses, you see two different styles and approaches to attacking the defense. At Arkansas Pine Bluff, because they've got such good running backs, they like to keep them in the game at all times, and they'll go with two back sets and one back set, and the two back set is almost extinct in college football today. Then you look at Alcorn State, and they barely like to use running backs at all. So. This is the more pro style offense that you're seeing in Arkansas Pine Bluff. And they have the ability to do that because they got good tight ends and they got great running backs. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter here. Jack Spink Stadium on the campus of Alcorn State here in Mississippi. The SWAC matchup as Arkansas Pine Bluff coming in and they have taken a three to nothing lead on a field goal from 25 yards out by Mr. Reyes back with the second quarter in just a moment. In a pop gun. As we get ready for the second quarter here at Jack Spink Stadium on the campus of Alcorn State University, Arkansas Pine Bluff leading three to nothing. Looking at some first half stats, total yards Pine Bluff with an edge there by 18. And uh, you see the that's the first quarter stats. Then one turnover by Alcorn, which led to the only score of the ball game, a three nothing score for Arkansas Pine Bluff, and they have the ball first down. And 10 right now. The ball resting right at about the 39 yard line, their own 39. Jonathan Moore has gone all the way at quarterback. He's back to pass. Stands in there, lets one fly. It's overthrown, incomplete. All the way down the field, Anthony Abrams, the intended receiver, 
covering was Roderick Williams and a penalty marker is down. There's Roderick Williams. Junior out of Monroe, Louisiana, preseason second team all conference. And they're calling it holding against Alcorn. Holding on the defense. Number one, 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. So it was not a pass interference, but holding. Well, tough call. Looks like Williams is in good position there. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah well, right there. Him. You got the jersey. <laughs> that happens. You know, every now and then you get the defensive back and the wide receiver get involved in a little bit of a chicken fight. And more times than not, it doesn't affect the play, but if the official's got a clear view and you grab that jersey with that closed fist, they've got to make that call. Ezekiel Smith, the up back in the eye formation on first down. The ball is resting just shy of the midfield strike at the 49. The pass on the near side, and it is complete up to the 39 yard line, close to a first down. Weber on the reception. On the stop defensively is Fuller for the Braves of Alcorn. You know, you're talking about Monty Coleman being in his first year. And anytime a new coach comes into a program, Jay, they always want to put their mark on it, kind of make some things happen, change some things around. And I asked Monty what philosophy he had. And after this play, we'll talk a little bit more about Monty Coleman and where he got some of his, uh, his coaching prowess from. First down and 10. After that pass to Weber. Nothing going this time for Mallet. The game may be of two yards. We'll go back to what he told me. He said when he was with the Redskins, Joe Gibbs came in. He was an assistant coach with Don Coriel with the San Diego Chargers. And they had that Air Coriel with Dan Fouts and Kellen Winslow and Charlie Joyner and he wanted to come into the Redskins with the same philosophy but after they went 0 and 8 he says wait a minute <laughs> I've got to change that I've got to go with what I have to work with and it's the same thing that he came in with a certain uh, idea of what he wanted to do but he had to change his philosophy based on the personnel that he had you can have the best system in the world but if you don't have the personnel to execute then that system is useless and all good coaches will adapt to the players that they have and what they're dealing with in order to have success Look out. This pass oh, wow. is going to be picked off. Lee Robinson, the linebacker. So Merry Christmas, Lee. Yeah. You got a Christmas present. I don't know how Santa Claus delivered it to you. And that's his second interception of the year. Lee Robinson, the senior out of Gloucester, Mississippi. His pro scouts have been drooling over him. Now, I don't want to go too hard on the quarterback, but, you know, guys in your face, what was he looking at? Did he not see Lee Robinson there? I mean, he had time to get rid of that. You really don't know who he was throwing that football to, but a good job by Lee Robinson of just reading the quarterback's eyes and allowing him to take you to where the ball was going. Another one of those mental errors. Interceptions like that, if the ball's not tipped or anything, that's a mental error by the quarterback, and Arkansas Pine Bluff is up to four mental errors early in this contest. From their own 44-yard line, they keep the ball on the ground, and this Pilcher trying to go to the right side, maybe a yard or two before a host of gold jerseys are there to meet him. Jafaris Pilcher. That's his fourth carry of the evening. I think something that you can never mention, that you can always keep mentioning the fact of how young this offensive line is for all corn state. Starting three freshmen on the offensive line and, today. And we're not talking about like a center next to a guard. Yeah. You know, you're talking about your They're two all tackles. over the place. <laughs> yeah. Two tackles. That's your money spot is your tackles. Salas and Fears and your center. Our freshmen and your center. So very important positions. And that time again on the carry was Pilcher. You're talking about the center, Isaac Williams. He was in a car accident. He was a passenger of a car accident that was uh, that happened back in July. And one of the incoming freshmen, running back Ladarius Adams, who was uh, projected to be a starter, was uh, killed in that car accident. Isaac Williams was able to survive. He was thrown out of the car if you look at the back of the helmet you see the initials MJ and LA both young players who were killed in automobile accidents the first one was killed soon after coach uh, Jones got the job that was Michael Johnson those are his initials and this pass is incomplete let's look at the helmet again Michael Johnson and Ladarius Anthony uh, Adams rather Ladarius Anth uh, Adams were the two young men who were both 
killed in car accidents. Uh, like I said, Johnson was killed soon after Coach Jones got the job. Anthony Adams was killed in July. And unfortunately, just allows you to put life in perspective. This is just a game. You know, football is just a game as people put their livelihood on the line, but it is still a game, and just nothing ever comes good out of parents having to bury their children first. And they went through a lot in dealing with those losses here as they punted away on fourth down. So 11.57 is the time remaining. Coming up after the break, we'll make a campus connection as we take a closer look and listen to the all corn State sounds of Dynamite Marching Band right after this. Is all that stuff drowning the drive to wash and wax your ride? It's time to kick the butt. Welcome back to Jack Spink Stadium here where ESPNU's Campus Connection is designed to get the pulse of the campus through student-generated content. And tonight we're going to speak to Willie Brinson, drum major for the sounds of Dynamite Allcorn State Marching Band. He's a senior from Meridian, Mississippi. And Willie, we'd like to thank you for joining us here. We're taking you away from some of your duties so far, huh? You're going to be all right? Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> all right. Tell us how being such a big part of this great band has enriched your college experience here at Allcorn. Well, it's, it's allowed me to be uh, known around campus, but like when I when I applied for the position, it wasn't so much about the individualism like me myself. I did it mostly because of the band because I wanted to see the band become better. We know that the bands work hard. You guys do two days and all that stuff during the week. But mm -hmm. tell our viewers out there how much how many hours of prep time go into tonight's performance? Oh, man, it's it's like from six to twelve every night. Like and then sometimes, you know, you have sectionals. You come in at four. So sometimes it's four to twelve at night every day. Up until right. Saturday. All right. Well, we thank you and thank the Alcorn State Sounds of Dynamite uh, Drum Major Willie Brinson for joining us. Willie, All right. it's time for you to do your thing. We want you to strike up the band. Go okay. ahead. Sam Griffin is their band director. He's been there forever, <laughs> as long as I can remember. First down and 10, the Golden Girls and the Sounds of Dynamite. Mickey Dean back in the lineup for Arkansas Pine Bluff. And he gets to carry on first down, maybe a yard on the play. Not much doing. Lee Robinson there defensively, along with Fuller. And back to Willie and the job he did with the band, much more respect for a band down here in Mississippi because I've been introduced to the state bird since I've been down here, and these mosquitoes are all over the place. And <laughs> to practice for all those hours down here, I give a lot of props to these bands down here in Mississippi. Ask our camera crew who was out <laughs> shooting yesterday about the mosquitoes. The, the, the northern boys like at Howard and Hampton, they got it easy. <laughs> it is second down. The pass overthrown, incomplete out on the far side and intended for Anthony Abrams, number 85. We're in Alcorn State, Mississippi, Jack Spink Stadium on the campus of Alcorn State University for the SWAC matchup between Pine Bluff from Arkansas and Alcorn State. I'm Charlie Neal along with my partner Jay Walker. Arkansas Pine Bluff in the gold jerseys. They have the ball, the purple home jerseys being worn by Alcorn State. Three nothing our score. We're in the second quarter. 11-11 remaining. Fifth possession of the evening for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Moore wants to go to the air once again. This one incomplete. 
Wow. You know, watching the pregame warm-ups, you were very impressed with Ivana Turner, the backup quarterback. Dick. Well, they've got a great backup, and you know, Jonathan Moore is definitely the guy, but they've got a backup quarterback with a lively arm, and right now Moore is just missing targets. I mean, that was great protection. The line picked up the stunt. They had one-on-one -on -one coverage along the outside. You see Moore there talking with Turner. And they're saying, you got to hit that pass there, son. You know, you draw it up, you get a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Wide receiver gets open and quarterback misfires. Reyes to punt it away. Third punt of the night for him. Gets pretty good hang time. And but it goes out of bounds, and so it's not much in terms of distance. He had a lot of uh, height on it, but it didn't go very far. And the ball is going to be spotted. Right at about the 43 yard line, a 30 yard punt. We'll be back to talk about a very special offer night. Played against Jay Walker in a moment. Jack Link's Beef Jerky presents Messing with Sasquatch. Five feet from the hole, right here. Hey, big fella. Want a cold one? Yeah, that's it. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Link's jerky. Feed your wild side. So here we remember, behave yourselves. Three nothing our score here at Jack Spink Stadium. You see the banners up on the wall of honor here. Jack Spinks, the stadium named after him, and a flashback goes to the guy who was all the way on the right, wearing number nine, Steve McNair. He's a product of Alcorn State University. You had a chance to play against him. Jay, what do you think? He's one of those guys I watch on the other sideline because you knew he was going to do something exciting, and you see the arm strength there he showed. And also, I think his work, he's so underestimated for. He was one of the hardest runners, not only in college football, but when he got to the NFL, the guys would say, hey, tackling Eddie George is one thing, but tackling Steve McNair was really hard because he ran very hard. You look at his career stats as far as what he did here at Alcorn State from 90 to 94. He was first in all divisions in career yards, season yards per game in 94, first in all divisions in career yards, second in all over 16,000, almost 17,000 yards. That's saying something, isn't it? That's saying something, and I know this will be controversial, but I'll make the argument nobody's done it better in the SWAT than Steve McNair. And I know you got the Willie Titans and you got the Doug Williams and all these guys, but from day one, he stepped on this campus here. He was the man and just got greater and greater every back season. Up, camera, back up, get some work. First and ten for the Braves. Taken off as Buckley on the quarterback keeper still on his feet. And he's down to the 35-yard line. A gain of about seven on the play. It'll be second down and three. I think he saw that package of Air McNair running the football there because <laughs> Buckley finally listened to me from up here in the booth and decided he was going to make up his mind quick and do some good hard running. And that's what they need. When you've got teams that are focusing on your wide receivers and you throwing these little extended handoff screens, Nobody accounts for the quarterback in the running game. You take on the running game yourself. Good job by Tim Buckley. Playing six true freshmen tonight. Coach Ernest Jones said he's building the program from the ground up. This time he hands off to Pilcher. Pilcher dancing to the outside, but he is sandwiched before he could turn the corner. He was really hit over there. He got double teamed. Yeah, didn't he? Franks was one of the men to hit him, and the other man was John Keith. One guy get them low, the other one get them right in the boom. Look at that. That was a Pine Bluff sandwich, wasn't he? <laughs> I mean, they ate him up on that one, and he took a shot. Third. And about two. Plenty of time, throws, has it complete, and has the first down to the 30-yard line. Edward Johnson on the reception, sophomore out of Natchez, Mississippi. Keith on the stop defensively, the senior from Palmdale, California, number six. And Saturday afternoon, college football continues on ESPNU. The Central Florida Knights head up north to take on the Eagles of Boston College. It's college football presented by Allstate on ESPNU. Game also available on ESPNU HD. More information, log on to ESPNU.com. Both teams going into that game one and one. And it's first down and ten. Both teams looking for their first win here of the season. From the shotgun, play action this time. 
Standing in there, looking into the end zone, and it's incomplete. Arsenal, the intended receiver, in the end zone down there, covering was Brown. Joseph Brown covering number three there. The freshman from Colleen, Texas, did a pretty good job for a freshman. Oh, this is what you want to do. Go up and knock the ball down at its highest point. Leave your feet. Don't allow the wide receiver an opportunity to get back into play. Joseph Brown, the freshman, doing a good job of covering the go-to man for Alcorn State. He had Emmanuel Ar Arsenault on lockdown on that last play. Arsenault just with one catch tonight. He came into the game with just two as their best receiver last year. 34 receptions for him, and it was the number two receiver on this Alcorn State team. And now the quarterback wants to take off Buckley. He has the first down right about the 20-yard line. That was a quarterback keeper all the way. I think it was supposed to be a design screen, and you see you're running back to various Pilcher. He just missed the man he was supposed to block. So what do you do? You take off running. That, that's a good <laughs> job of recognition and realizing when somebody's coming free to catch you in the backfield. This Alcorn team was picked to finish fifth in the preseason polls in the Eastern Division. That was a gain of about nine yards. They give him a first down and ten right at the 20. Trying to go left this time is Pilcher. And Pilcher runs into a host of goal jerseys on the far side. Dorn was one of the men there along with Mingo. Pilcher just hasn't had the ability to get on track. And right now the defensive front seven for Arkansas Pine Bluff doing a good job of just neutralizing completely the running game for Alcorn State unless it's been a scramble by Buckley. The running attack for Alcorn State has been non-existent. They go with the no huddle. One of the things Coach Ernest Jones told us yesterday, Jay, was he wants the ball snapped six seconds after the referee puts the ball ready for play. What he wants and what he's getting to do is Because it's not happening, <laughs> is it? Play clock's getting ready to run down right now. Play clock's all the way down to three. <laughs> Into the end zone. Double right move. there. Sweet. Touchdown. And it's Arsenal with his second touchdown of the season. Good move by Arsenal. Went out and then back up. Yeah, nicely designed play on the rollout. They sealed the corner, and Arsenal ran a sweet route. Take a look here. You'll see Buckley get outside the pocket. Great job of sealing on the outside. And Arsenal did a 10-yard out and then got up. And Buckley had the ability to squeeze that ball in there in between the free safety and the cornerback for the touchdown strike. The point after is up by Richardson. And it is good. And now Alcorn that was down three to nothing on top seven to three here in the second quarter with 748 to go. And let's look at it once again. Great move by Arsenal. We said he's their best receiver. And they wanted to get every third pass in his direction. This one good for six. Approaching target now. Sensors detect a more advanced flight. Prime time brought to you by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. And some historic landmarks here in this part of Mississippi. In Lorman, the Windsor ruins from the Windsor family back in the 1800s. It's a mansion that burned. But the stately columns, as you can see, still stand. Very historic down here. You know, some of the history you read about in books, you actually get a chance to experience it down here. What was the city we went to that was too beautiful to burn? Uh, Port Gibson. Port Gibson. Right up the road, city, about 17 miles. City so beautiful, they set everything else on fire but Port Gibson. Huh? City too beautiful to burn. <laughs> and now Alcorn set to kick it off. This will be Ulf key kicking it. At the 10 yard line on the return. Arkansas Pine Bluff bringing it back. Arkansas Pine Bluff, that's Bruce Peters. And a penalty marker is down. That last scoring drive. Finally, Alcorn gets on the board. After the play, personal foul against the defense, number 30. Late hit, 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. So a late hit. On the return, seven plays, 43 yards. They used a 313 off the clock. 43-yard drive, and 
both teams have had good field positions to start off this game. I mean, it's not like they've had to drive 80 yards in order to get points on the board. Normally, when teams are getting such good field position, you would think that you'd have more than just 10 points total on the board, but the mental errors have added up and kept Arkansas Pine Bluff out of the end zone. Yeah. And that score by Alcorn was the first points that they put up in the last eight quarters. They didn't score their last two ball games, and here's a pass out in the flat and separated from the ball is Raymond Weber. Ra Raymond Weber as McLaren was there to make sure he didn't hold on number 22. I mean, McLaren just keeps going. You know, you got some guys that are just football players, and Corey McLaurin seems to be one of those football players. If you find the football, he's going to be somewhere around there trying to make good things happen. And he's active, senior leadership, got a great motor, and I like to call them good old-fashioned ball players. Now the pitch comes to the near side. This time a flag goes down in the vicinity of holding as Nicky Dean gets Beal. the call. Got a marker on the play. The umpire throws it. Normally you're going to see holding. And the umpire in tonight's game, Paul Myers. Personal foul. Tough foul. Oh. Now it wasn't holding, it was a chop block. You know what the chop block means when you're down the trenches, if one guy's already engaged blocking somebody, then you can't come in and block low. So somewhere along the line, somebody's going to be blocking high and one went low. And you're not allowed to do that. Down in the guard, the center. One hit high, one hit low. That's a chop block. And I, I really do agree with that call. You have to do it for safety concerns. It's tough enough to beat somebody one on one. And then when you've got that second guy coming in and taking out your legs underneath you, that's just not very safe. Moved the ball back, then they moved it back up. I don't understand that. I don't understand how they moved it. I thought they penalized it. There's the line of scrimmage. The 48. They haven't marked it they off. They haven't marked it. They couldn't have marked Jones it. Jones is on the sideline furious. Well, he has a point. <laughs> I mean, if the penalty, if the play started at the 48 yard line. And there was a penalty against the offensive team for a chop block. Why didn't they move the ball back and penalize them the yards? Maybe we've got to count referees. You know, one plus one doesn't always have to add up to two. It could add up to whatever you want it to be, Charlie. <laughs> so maybe in this case, hey, maybe it's not minus 10 yards. Personal foul, chop block against the offense, number 65 and 68, 15 yard penalty, second down. Now they're going to mark it. <laughs> Curtis Jones finally got his point across. I mean, he just called it out. They went back and marked it. Then they came back to the original line of scrimmage. You know, 15 yards is a big one. Not just 10, not just 5, but 15 yards. Is a, take a look at the penalties. And Arkansas Pine Bluff tack another 15 yards onto that total. And they got to get their stuff together. I mean, you call a penalty. How do you not mark it off? <laughs> One way or the other, you don't keep the ball where it is. And I know it wasn't declined. Here's the pass. And we have it complete. Up to midfield, trying to get to the corner, trying to turn the corner after the reception. And finally brought out of bounds is Anthony Abram. Let's go to Beth Moens with a Sports Center U update. Take it away. Charlie in Colorado, they want the blackout to be a knockout. Opening drive of the game, Cody Hawkins, 38 yards up top to Josh Smith. They go 83 yards in under three minutes. The Buffs up early. That's great. Colorado. West Virginia better get their act yeah, together. Number 21, West Virginia. The days in the top 25 will be vanishing with the thin air. It, it is. Colorado thin air. Third down. And now the pass going in toward the end zone and a battle downfield. Nothing doing that time on the receiving end for Raymond Weber as Corey McLaurin was right there with him step for step. Number 22, so it'll bring up a fourth down. The ball resting just across the midfield stripe. 
in the Alcorn State Territory. This is how teams end up 0 3. The defense has been doing the job, special teams giving the offense great field position. And when you don't capitalize and put points on the board, then your defense goes out there and they start to get a number of plays on the field. They get tired, they get winded, and fatigue sets in. And a fair catch caught and made by Roderick Williams right at about the seven yard line. You can see the future stars of football today when ESPNU delivers high school football action Friday night as the Apopka Florida Blue Darters take on the South Panola Mississippi Tigers. Old Spice High School Showcase is presented by Nike and it comes your way on ESPNU Friday night at 8 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. ESPNU is now in high definition and to get great action on ESPNU in high definition contact your local cable operator or satellite provider ESPNU HD the big picture in college sports along with Jay Walker Charlie Neal here on the campus of Alcorn State University first down and 10 at their own seven yard line the Braves of Alcorn leading it by a score of seven to three and Antoine Young gets the call for the second time this evening there to make the stop John Keith number six the senior he's the number three tackler on this team coming in after a gain of about three I look for head coach and defensive coordinator Monty Coleman to take the gloves off right now you got a team backed up in their own within their own 10 yard line bring the pressure try and force that turnover because your offense is struggling to put points on the board so Look for the Golden Lions to get aggressive here in terms of defensive play call. He said the strength of his team is the defensive line, and they've done a pretty good job as they continue to shut down the running game right now. The Braves of Alcorn, especially deep in their own territory, when it's needed the most, as Leachman is in there, the junior out of Compton, California, number 97, to lead that defensive charge. And he knows a little bit about defense. You know, he started his college career as a defensive as a as a defensive back. That is Monty Coleman. Three years he played that, and then he finally was switched to a linebacker. And I'm sure he was one of those headhunters back there in the defensive secondary. The mental approach. Just likes to get physical. You know, strong safety. I can see it. He's one of those guys as a head coach. He makes me want to go out there and play some football. He just got that demeanor about himself that says, hey, I like football, and he wills it on his players too. Third down, seven, and the whistle blows. The layup game is going to be the call. This to the goal. Third down. When you get penalties like that, we know that the players have not bought in and embraced fully in the offensive scheme that Coach Jones is trying to get his offense to run. You know, he talked about, hey, he wants that play call within six seconds of the play being blown dead. Well, why do you get a delayed game call? You know, they're not stepping on the gas. They have not set any tempo at all. And the players got to buy into the system. It all starts with the quarterback, get those guys in and out of the huddle, and get the play call. So now working from the shotgun, the ball spotted at the five-yard line. Timothy Buckley. He's going to try to run it out of there. Gets a little breathing room. And he's finally really belted down at about the 12 yard line. And it was Stuart Franks, the free safety, who came up and really tattooed him. Number nine there. He's a senior out of Little Rock, Arkansas Central High. Now you see Buckley here make the decision to run. And at the end of this run, if you don't get down, well, guess what? You're going to get hit. <laughs> and he got hit. You talk about the free safety, Stuart Franks. He's not a small free safety, 6'3, 220 pounds. He can put that hat on him. So to punt it away. That's Richardson, the freshman from Indiana. This will not be returned because the return man knee hit the ground. That's Mario Howard. So let's look at what's happening in the SWAC right now as we look at uh, games in week four. First of all, one of the big matchups is the rematch of last year's SWAC championship game. That game is at Jackson State between Grambling and Jackson, but it doesn't count as a, as a in the conference standings. 
but it's still going to be a heck of a football game, measuring stick game to see which program is there. Jackson State needs a victory badly. They took it on the chin last week at Tennessee State and Grambling, and they looked okay. And you saw some of the other stories, and we'll revisit them after this play at first down and 10 for Arkansas Pine Bluff, keeping the ball on the ground. The other one was Bobby Reed for Texas Southern. The quarterback who transferred in was eligible their first game of the year against Prairie View. But he is back now. Yeah, he's playing and they're getting things done. And, you know, Texas Southern finally got a win since 2006. And they went out to California and took on Shaw University and got the victory. And look at this. Prairie View ain't in the Mississippi Valley. You know what's so interesting about that uh, Texas Southern story is they were caught up in the Hurricane Ike and couldn't get back to Houston and still haven't gotten back to Houston. They got back to Dallas and that's as close as they've been able to get to, to home since uh, the hurricane as this pass goes incomplete and they've been staying in Dallas this week and they have a game at Texas College on Saturday and probably go home after that because school is supposed to reopen on Monday. Had an opportunity to talk to head football coach at Texas Southern Johnny Cole and one of the things he realized was the outreach and the support of the alumni base that Texas Southern has in the state of Texas. Those kids have been away from school for it'll almost be two weeks and they've got supplies and they've been getting toiletries and the alumni have stepped up big time to help out the Texas Southern football team. Yeah, they played that game last week against Shaw in Sacramento, California doing Hurricane Ike and uh, they never were able to get back. It is third down now. Jonathan Moore in trouble. Steps away from one man. Let's it go. And it's incomplete. Overthrown intended for Raymond Weber on his sideline but it goes incomplete and that'll bring up a punting situation. Uh, quarterback completion percentage in this contest has just gone by the wayside. I mean, <laughs> these guys don't want to pass over 50 percent. They keep forcing the ball deep downfield not taking any of the intermediate passing game which both defenses seem as if they're willing to give up. But these quarterbacks keep trying to force the ball downfield. And that's why the completion percentages are so low. Only six passes have been completed in this game between the two quarterbacks. Mm. Well, you know, Steve McNair is not playing, right? <laughs> <laughs> Left footed kicker is Reyes. He gets the punt away. It takes a pretty good bounce and is down at the nine yard line. Let's go to the studio. Beth Mowens has an update. <laughs> Boulder the Buffs are going back for more off the turnover Cody Hawkins his second touchdown pass of the game as West Virginia suffers a little altitude anxiety hmm. you know West Virginia is 10 and 8 against Big 12 teams wow well, <laughs> they can't wait to get back into the old, into the old Big East huh? so it's been a struggle for them even though they have a little edge there it hasn't been great it hasn't been you know Unfortunately, it looks like Pat White's going to be a casualty of poor team performance. He was a, one of the favorites to compete against Tim Tebow and Chase Daniels for that Heisman Trophy. But you get beat like that on Thursday night on national TV with everybody watching. Many times I've seen the Heisman Trophy dreams go down the wayside. You think this uh, may be a little bit of a, a layoff uh, rust on them? They haven't played since they lost to East Carolina. And, and that was the thing I was thinking. The loss with East Carolina, ECU was justifying that by going out there and beating everybody that they're playing. So they could have rebounded from that and had one loss on the schedule and could have just said, hey, we played a good, very good football team that day. But you go out there and you struggle on the road. You know what's so interesting? Bill Stewart, who took over Rich Rodriguez as the head coach at West Virginia. Yeah, new contract, didn't he? Finally. <laughs> <laughs> finally, I mean, he got the job. He's been on the job nine months, and they finally gave him a contract this week <laughs> after he lost. I mean, yeah. <laughs> maybe it was he lost more often. No, <laughs> no, maybe, maybe he would have got a bigger contract had he won. Had he won. That's, <laughs> that, that's the way to look at it. <laughs> so they're gonna let's see. In all of that, we've lost something going on here. Somehow, Alcorn still has the ball. First down and 10. They punted it, but now they have a first down. Either Antoine Young and Alcorn State still struggling to find their running game because they continue to get dominated on the line of scrimmage. 
That's been the one bright side. Let's take a look at our quarterback comparison and see. We talk about the lack of QB productivity. 38% and 42%. Who wants it more? Somebody's got to get over the old 50% line in order to become an effective quarterback call in this contest. All right, we got it now. From their own nine-yard line, because Pine Bluff had punted it. And here we go. A little daylight there. And uh, Antoine Young tried to find a little daylight very close to the first down marker. He has to get to the 19 to get a first down. Stop made defensively by Stuart Franks. Here's Antoine Young from Crystal Springs, Mississippi. One of the things that concerned Ernest Jones coming into today's game was all the drop passes that they had in the last few ball games. Here again, the ball on the ground. And it's going to be close to the first down marker, depending on where they spot it. A minute 49 to go. The clock stops. Starting to get physical down there on the it field. It certainly is. Helmets flying off. And yards getting tough to come by this inside trap here. You see the pull on guard and looking for a little crease of daylight to run. And look at him, still blocking. What a great effort there by Bronson Carvalho. Carvalho's a preseason second team all conference selection. Look, loses his helmet number 71 right there in the middle screen. He's not done with the play. <laughs> He's still rolling. You got to play to the whistle. He, I like that. He is from Hawaii. From uh, Kappa, Hawaii. Went to St. Louis High there. Number 71, as you were talking about, as you look at the quarterback, Timothy Buckley, who's ranked sixth in the conference in passing and fifth in total offense coming into today's ball game. And one of the reasons why I'm really disappointed by the quarterback completion percentage is in today's college football game, you should average 60% passing. You get so many of these little screens and bubble screen you can call that most passers are in the 60% range if you're down there in the 30s and 40s you are really struggling this will be fielded by Arkansas Way to split the gap. and it's going to be Bruce Peters and Peters to the outside a flag goes down though at the 40 yard line Peters on the return finally stopped by Carvalho one of the offensive players but at the 40 yard line there's a penalty marker so again Arkansas Pine Bluff had the ball in pretty good field position but it's going to probably be brought back Jeffrey Little a reserve fullback a freshman is the man guilty of the hold is where did the hold take place in well the flag was dropped at about the 41 yard line so let's see if we can see it number 47 was the man guilty of the holding they're going down and what a good job of splitting the crease there we get to the outside and we don't necessarily see it but I like how he turned on the Jets and there goes my guy again Carvalho you see him get small oh, yeah, and right then explode there. through and make the tackle <laughs> Take a look at the bottom of your screen there. You see that hold there. Can you know that's what kills coaches? Had nothing to do with the play. He was actually gonna get away from that one, but they've got to call it. So Pine Bluff with a minute 33 to go before halftime will get the ball first and ten at their own 49 yard line. And even with the penalty, this is still great field position to start a drive. And this pass is complete. On the near side and finally run out of bounds to stop the clock. On the reception is Weber, number 86. Don't forget coming up at halftime, a blackout in Boulder, Ohio State News, and a preview of the Southeast Conference this weekend. Coming up some big games coming up in the SEC on Saturday. Tigers. Uh, Alabama's at Arkansas. Tiger weekend. Florida, LSU. Yeah. yeah, Florida, Tennessee, LSU, Auburn. Georgia's playing also, but they're not playing the SEC school. They're playing they're going out west. Arizona State, yeah. Interesting matchup there, too. They better be careful. First down and 10. Little screen on the near side. Not a lot of running room there. As Mosley was there. Second time this evening, we've seen Jonathan Moore float that screen pass there. And when that ball hangs in the air for so long, Gives the defense time to react and find 
and sniff out where the ball carrier is. So he's got to put just a little bit more zip on the screen pass. You don't drill it in there, but you just can't leave it floating in the air like he's done this evening. Martel Mallard is the lone back in the backfield with him. On this second down, we'll call it eight. A little quick screen out to the flat. And on the left side, running uh, with some reckless abandon and uh, picking up the first down is number 33 for Arkansas Pine Bluff. And coming up with it that time was uh, Mario Howard. Ray Ohio Howard, he's been a, a return man. Lee Robinson making the stop defensively, but it's a first down, and Pine Bluff is moving the ball. Inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Here's Jonathan Moore. He'll run it to the left side, pick up a couple, and now a timeout is going to be called by Pine Bluff. This will be their first timeout. So they'll have two remaining with a minute three left. There's you. Looking at Monty Clark, who was a seven year assistant at Arkansas Pine Bluff. Let's look a more at those SEC games this weekend, Jay. You're looking at uh, Georgia at Arizona State. Mark Rick, he's 25 and four at opponent stadiums. And I can never get enough of No Sean Marino. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he can do it. He's truly a special talent at that running back position. And then you. Move along, and you got the Gators going to old Rocky Top, huh? Yeah, yeah. Gators won 16 of the last 22 meetings against Tennessee. That Tennessee team is going to be hungry, though. They've got 11 starters return on offense. If they can settle down at the quarterback position, they can still get back in the SEC chase. And of course, you see LSU at Auburn. Last four games decided by a touchdown or less. Both that Tiger, they battle for the Tiger Bowl, huh? Who's the real Tiger in the SEC conference? And that's going to be a good one. LSU give them credit. They lost a parallel to quarterback, but they haven't missed a beat. They're still undefeated and ranked in the top 10. Alabama won by three last year against Arkansas. Arkansas is just one of those teams that match up well with Alabama. They come to play, and that's that game between the both teams have those similar colors with the red and the crimson, you could call it, and the white, and that's always going to be a showdown. So see what Coach Saban and the boys down at Alabama can do this year to hold off the Razorbacks. Pig Suey. <laughs> So now we're looking at a second down and 10 for Pine Bluff. They just used one of their timeouts. Second and 10. Moore standing in there under a little pressure. Decides to go out to the left side, trying to get some block from one of his running backs back there. He was doing a pretty good job, and that was Mickey Dean trying to block for him as he went around the left side. Why is defensive pressure so important? Because the more hits you get on a quarterback, the more the quarterback stops looking downfield, starts to look at his lineman in front of him. So right now you see Jonathan Moore, he's a quarterback that's looking at the rush as he drops back to pass, and that's taken away from his downfield vision. Thus he's settling for these scrambles of one or two yards and not giving the plays time to develop because the defensive line is disrupting their rhythm. It is third down now. Third and about seven for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Ball inside the 30 at the 27. Little swing out to the right side to Mallet. Mallet inside the 25 to the 24 yard line. And that's all he's going to get. Still about four yards shy of a first down. De uh, Roderick Williams there defensively, number one for the Braves of Alcorn. So let's see if they bring on the field goal unit for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Carlos Reyes, who's already hit a field goal from 25 yards. Today, this will come from the 31 yard line, so it'll be a 41 yard attempt. He's a lefty now, so he's got a difficult angle. He's got to push this ball to the left, so that could come into play here. Kick has got the distance, hit the upright, and is no good. So, an opportunity to put three more points on the board with 10 seconds to go. He had the distance. It just hit the, I believe it was the right upright, and bounced back into the field of play. You know who was great at that was one of my former coaches, Bill Parcells. Take a look here. The snaps down. It's good. And, you know, he's got to aim that ball there, and he just dinged it off the upright, trying to be too careful. And, you know, Parcells was so good when we had Matt Barr and guys like that. He would go to the play, the previous play call. You want it on the left hash or the right hash. Mm -hmm. And he would run the ball or call the play design to go to that hash mark to give the kickers a better opportunity of making the kick and converting. So they kneel it down to 
in the first half. Alcorn with the ball after the missed field goal by Reyes. And as they go to the locker room, we have a four point ball game here on the campus of Alcorn State in Lorman or Alcorn State, Mississippi. Seven to three. A field goal by Reyes from 25 yards out, and Buckley's 19 yard pass to Arsenault has accounted for all the scoring here in the first half. We'll be back with halftime activities from the studio in a moment. Seven to three is our score here. Alcorn State leading the Golden Lions of Arkansas Pine Bluff. We're at halftime, third quarter, getting ready to get underway here. And so far, when you look at the first half stats, Charlie Neal along with Jay Walker, and look at the first half of this particular game, what stands out in your mind, Jay? Well, obviously nobody's throwing an offensive clinic right now, but the defense has stepped up and made big plays, but the offenses have not taken advantage of great field position and great efforts by both defensive units. Now let's look at some of the first half highlights, mistakes by both teams. This is the first one by Alcorn. The sack quarterback loses the ball, picked up by the Golden Lions, and they score. Yeah, they picked up and they had to settle for a field goal. When you get great field position like that, you got to punch that ball in the end zone, jump out to a 7-0 lead rather than a 3-0 lead. Then another turnover here by Arkansas Pine Bluff, and Alcorn was actually able to take advantage of this later on during the drive. Touchdown strike here to Arsenal to give the Braves the 7-3 advantage, and then we got deadlock there. Missed opportunities for the Golden Lions. Field goal hit off the uprights. Missed two field goal attempts, and that's where the score ended up, 7-3. And for Monty Coleman and the Golden Lions, what do they got to do to get some more points on the board? Let's take a look at our first half stats, and you know some of the key things you see here is the number of plays. Each team is called 32 plays, and the points off turnovers. They're just not getting it done there. Arkansas Pine Bluff wanted to come in here and run the ball. They've got 126 yards total offense, and Alcorn with a tiny bit of 109 yards total offense but yet they still have the lead that's what counts more importantly 7-3 our score here at halftime and that's the way it stands right now Jay as you said 7-3 at halftime and uh, of course we'll see what happens in the second half and you're looking at the quarterback comparison and what they did in the first half nothing uh, artistic about what happened and let's look at the quarterback comparison there you see it Jonathan Moore, 9 of 18, and Buckley, 5 of 12. And there's the yards, neither one over 100 yards in the first half. One interception by Jonathan Moore and a, a touchdown pass by Tim Buckley. And let's keep in mind, you talk about an Alcorn State offense with Tim Buckley that they really use four wide receivers at all times. So for them to have 42% completion rate and barely 100 yards passing, that lets you know the inefficiency they've had with their passing game. Both teams have struggled as we start the second half at the four yard line. Here's a return by the Alcorn Braves and down the sideline is McLaurin. Corey McLaurin on the return. There he is, number 22. He's a senior out of Collins, Mississippi, so he gives his team pretty good field position as we start the third quarter. You've got defensive players on special teams trying to jump start the offense to get it going and you'll see the wedge there. Good job of McLaurin of seeing where the hole was, recognizing it and hitting the hole hard and strong. Great field position for Alcorn State to start the second half. Back to pass. Buckley complete. In the near flat, coming out of the backfield, or Elliot Moore actually was the man on the receiving end of that. Number eight, the senior out of Jackson, Mississippi, transfer from Hines Community College, which is just outside of Jackson. Gain of four on the play, it'll be second down. Second and six. They like said, just getting started here in the third quarter in Jackson, Mississippi. This time it's Pilcher. Pilcher gets the first down, breaking tackles, and down inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. DeVaris Pilcher. Off of that spread option play there, 
Good decision by the quarterback, Tim Buckley, to hand the ball off to Pilcher, reading off that end. Jared Dorn, big hole in the middle. And you'll see Pilcher doesn't let the first man bring him down and picks up the extra yards after initial contact. That's what I like. After you get hit, how many more yards can you pick up after the first initial contact? Pilcher doing a good job leaning forward. 21 yards for him for the evening and carrying the ball. This time is the quarterback Buckley he's going to keep it try to cut it back inside and he stumbles inside the 30 to about the 29 yard line. And that's the play that you call along with the previous play you set it up on the previous play by going with the dive option handing the ball off to Darius Pilcher this time when the defensive end thinks he's got it snipped out you pull it out of his gut and Buckley gets around to the end to make a good run play on first down. So to bring up a second down and five. This time the handoff doesn't get much with Pilcher on the carry. Good job by the outside linebacker John Keith and what you see Monty Coleman doing the same. Well if you think you're going to do a number count off of just one guy on the in man of the line of scrimmage. I'll bring an outside linebacker in to crowd the line of scrimmage. Now you've got two defenders to worry about. And when that happens quarterback is taught just Give the ball to the dive man. Don't take a big loss. So it's a third down. Third down facing the Braves of Alcorn. Two of seven and third down conversions tonight. And now the quarterback Buckley is going to keep it. And he is going to be, be be a little shy, I believe, of the first down mark. Bounced out of bounds on the far side, but a penalty marker goes down. And yeah, that flag was thrown back in the secondary where you so often see some type of defensive holding. After the play, personal foul on the defense, number nine, half distance to the goal, first down. Stuart Franks is the man who's guilty of the personal foul. Let's see if we can take a look. Spring Franks right here in the, at the top of your screen, you'll see him number nine there, come in and hit the guy right in the back there. You know, right there, they've got to call that one there. Wide receiver had his back turned, was looking for the ball, and Franks just decided to run right over him. Personal foul. That's, you know, if this were basketball, it'd be unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. They say he's one of those NFL prospects, a senior out of Little Rock Central, preseason first team all conference, and he's on the sideline now. And I'm sure Monty Coleman's not happy with that penalty. Although you've got great talent, you've got to learn to play the game cleanly and fairly in between the whistles. And here's Pilcher trying to dance to the outside, breaks one of two tackles, and finally he stood up there. Good hit defensively down there by Trey Williams. Also there, number 92, Aaron Hintz, senior out of Pine Bluff, Arkansas. You see Pilcher get outside, get turned around and spun. Woo! <laughs> Sometimes you just wish you'd have went down with the first contact. You know, you want to go head up with linebackers. You don't want to have big 6'3", 310-pound nose tackles hitting you. Balls on the ground. Pilcher just does the best thing he can do is just fall on it to avoid any further disaster. And that was clearly a miscommunication between the quarterback and the running back. Pilcher was not in a position to accept the handoff like, are you sure you're giving this thing to me? And you just can't have things like that happen when you're trying to go into an opponent's territory and put some points on the board. Plays like that make you settle for field goal attempts rather than come away with touchdowns. Third down. They lose about five on the mishandle of the ball on the last play, and Buckley's going to work from the shotgun with an empty backfield right now. He has a man on the end zone. He missed him going down the right side, and that was Chris Williams wide open on that corner. Did you see that, Jay? Wide open, and so what happens so many times is the quarterback makes up his mind rather than reading his keys to the defensive coverage, and you had Williams running wide open down the seam, and Buckley just act like he wasn't even there. Take a look here, number four, right there in the middle of your screen. I mean, nobody's going to come into the picture on him. He's sitting there waiting in the soft spot of the zone. All you have to do is put it on him, and that's a touchdown all day long. Instead, Try and force it in there to Elliott Moore, throw the ball behind, and bring out the field goal unit.
This will be Taylor Richardson. He'll attempt the field goal. He missed the 33 yarder earlier. This, this one is up. And this one is good. So he puts this one through. And now it's a 10 to 3 ball game. Alcorn takes the lead. 10.51 to go. Remember, prior to today's game, they went eight quarters without scoring. In fact, they went nine because they didn't score in the first quarter here. Back to Alcorn State in a moment. It's another week. You'll find them only at the Home Depot. ESPNU, we're in high definition here on the campus of Alcorn State University for the SWAC matchup, Arkansas Pine Bluff against Alcorn State along with Jay Walker. I'm Charlie Neal. Glad you could join us for this Thursday night primetime college football contest. Alcorn State just increased their lead to 10-3 on a 37-yard field goal by the freshman Taylor Richardson. That's his first collegiate field goal. He missed a couple earlier before this contest tonight. He missed one earlier this evening, and he finally put one through from 37 yards out. So you always remember that first score in college, right? No matter what position you're playing. Even if it's an extra point, <laughs> if you're kicking. The kickoff from the 15-yard line. Arkansas Pine Bluff on the return, and that's Bruce Peters, who's gotten a pretty good workout tonight, returning kicks. Mickey Dean was one of our impact players coming up at the beginning of the game last week. 129 yards against Central Arkansas. Averaged 10 point, eight points per game and a touchdown, but they've held him pretty much in check. We said that at the outset. That was one of the things that defensively Alcorn wanted to do, especially with uh, Ernest Collins, the defensive coordinator. And look for Arkansas Pine Bluff to give Mickey Dean plenty of touches here in the second half. Great running back. You got to keep feeding him because he's due to break one. And he has the ball. There you go, Jay. You're the prophet. <laughs> <laughs> the football can be a numbers game, and all of a sudden he can rip off one of those big electrifying runs and help get his team some momentum as well as electrify the crowd and get his numbers up there. Good running backs just always just keep running, and you got to feed those guys. Just keep giving them touches, and good things will happen. That's an eight-yard gain. He has had a 58-yard run this year, so he can get, like you said, some, some, he can step. some yardage. Yeah, I like to say a guy like that, he can step. He can reel them off. Second down and a couple. Maybe a yard on that carry, and that's all he's going to get that time. Mickey Dean again on the carry. We talk about the the swack and uh, some of the stories. They were one in five outside of conference play with their teams a week ago. So uh, no. ouch. <laughs> yeah, that do doesn't sound too good, does it? I mean, uh, Louisiana Monroe beat Alabama A&M, and Texas Southern beat Shaw. That was the win. Jackson State lost to Tennessee State. Troy beat Alcorn. Central Arkansas beat Arkansas Pine Bluff and Gramlin lost to Northwestern State. So those were the five losses. The only win was Texas Southern over Shaw. And when that happened, you say, well, thank goodness for conference play. <laughs> Let's get to the meet of the schedule and start playing some familiar opponents. And, you know, I think, you know, you can go out there and justify that it's going to be a down year in the SWAC. I mean, they've been good for so long. They lost some great players to the NFL. And, down here and it's wide open. I think this is a wide open race in the swag this year, and I think that's why that Jackson State Grambling matchup is going to be so crucial to see who's got a good chance of representing the conference and swag championship. You talk about one of the great receivers from the swag lost a year ago, Jason Jones from Arkansas Pine Bluff, who went up to the Buffalo Bills. He was cut uh, at the last cut before the season started, but uh, had a pretty good showing in the Bills camp, and they they had some injuries in some other positions as they try to keep this on the wow. This was a He's not gonna get fourth it. down and inches play, and the defense just held strong, and they're still battling over the ball. Or was that third down? They were measuring. That was third that down. That was third down. They were measuring. They measured for the first down. They didn't get it, so they went for it with the running of uh, 
running game and it, they have to measure it again. Yeah. They're going to measure once again. But, but to go back to the, the Jason Jones thing with Buffalo, they had some uh, injuries in some key positions in the line and they thought wide receiver was expendable and that's why he didn't make the team. And that happens in the NFL. It's all about a numbers game. And take a look at that last quarterback sneak. I mean, one thing you have to do as a quarterback is stay low on quarterback sneaks. Nothing good comes from a quarterback getting high. I think he's going to be. Wow, he got a good spot. <laughs> they get it. Yeah, he they got it. Wow, he got a good spot. He really did. Because he was driven back from the beginning. I mean, <laughs> you take a look at this. Look at the push. I mean, he gets no look. He runs into his own man. He's back. Yeah. I mean. You know, they spotted that ball ahead of that hash mark you see there on the bottom of your screen, and he never came close to getting there. Oh, well. Game of inches, as they said, Jay. <laughs> and it's first down and 10. Monty Coleman will take it. The pitch. Mickey Dean trying to turn the corner, shedding tackles, and finally getting across midfield. To about the 48 yard line, a gain of about seven on the play. They'll make it an eight yard gain where it'll be second down and two. And you can see the emotion by Mickey Dean after this run. Look at the guys he makes miss. First guy, er, stop on a dime, cut, cut against the grain, arm tackle me. No, you're not going to do that. And what a good move here. Look at the ability to cut on a dime. And, you know, we're running back like that. What he can tell the line is if you guys can just block the first level, I can make it happen. Just give me some help. Leading rusher in the conference coming into tonight's ball game, Mickey Dean. And he gets it on the delay play, the draw, and he gets the first down inside the 45 to the 44 yard line. And that was a good run there. That's what you want to see. You know, not having to pull a guard or trap, just straightforward football. We're going to give the ball to our best football player, and we want our five guys up front on the line to just lean forward and let's pick up the first down. That's what they haven't had the ability to do thus far this evening and that last play there seems to show me that the offensive line starting to get their act together as the gold lines are trying to muscle the Braves a little bit. Well Monty Coleman theme for this season the pride is back. That's the theme and they're trying to get some pride going here down seven points in the ball game and this time Martel Mallett he cannot get away from big number 56 Lee Robinson right in the middle. And with that last play that you see what has the NFL scouts really liking Lee Robinson. You got to talk about a interior linebacker 6'3", 245 pounds, but have the speed. Look at the speed. Number 56 coming up on your left hand scribe. Swim a block, get to the outside. I mean, he made that look easy. The ability to run and slip the block and to be that big and that fast, that's scary. He was the number two tackler on this team a year ago. He leads the team in tackles this year. Had one game this season in which he grabbed 13 of the opponents in terms of tackles. This is a pass and it's complete right at the 40 yard line. And it's complete to Raymond Weber. Weber with his fourth catch of the evening. And it's Cooper on the stop defensively. Marcus Cooper, senior out of Laurel, Mississippi, a transfer from Lincoln Community College. Key third down call coming up here. You know, at this time, you like to go with what's been working. And no passing plays have been working thus far for the goal line. So try and get somebody going across formation or a quick little curl route, find your best matchup combination. Two of nine third down conversions for Pine Bluff tonight. Incomplete. Again, Weber, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up a fourth down. Yeah, that's just one of those ones where. You have to have the ability to do that. They design that play. They seal the corner on the rollout. And quarterback skips the ball into the ground. And Coach Coleman has got that look kind of like mom always said. There'll be <laughs> days like this. You know, he spent seven years as an assistant. The last few as a defensive coordinator. And he, talking to him, he says he uh, owes a great deal of gratitude to Mo Forte, who hired him here at Arkansas Pine Bluff. And he's let him know it. Reyes, the left footed punt goes into the end zone. It'll be brought out to the 20. And at 620 is the time remaining. Make it 619 to be exact. And left here in the third quarter after a 39 yard punt. 
Get set for women's volleyball action on ESPNU. USC takes its nationally ranked squad to West Point to Battle Army. Friday at 5 on ESPNU. Now, get huge biceps and massive shoulders. Get the V cut, a small little waist, and a big upper body with the perfect pull up. From the U.S. Navy SEAL inventor of the perfect push up, the perfect pull up changes the pull up bar into a complete upper body machine with two design <laughs> From their own 20 yard line, Arkansas Pine Bluff on defense right now. Ark Alcorn with the ball, leading it 10 to 3. And it's now time to open up the ESPNU yearbook for Thursday night reunion. Now this six foot six, 245 pound Dynamo played defensive line for what is now Arkansas Pine Bluff. He played there from 66 to 69. After graduating, spent 12 seasons with the Pittsburgh Steelers and won four Super Bowls. He's a six-time Pro Bowl selection as part of the Steel Curtain. Jay, you have any idea what it is? Is it the shoes? It's got to be the shoes. It might be the shoes. We'll tell you. When we come back. First down and 10. Alcorn with the ball leading the second possession of the second half. They scored a field goal their last time down the field. Here's Buckley. And he's putting it in the air and has it complete on the far sideline to Arsenal. So let's go back to six-time Pro Bowl selection from Arkansas Pine Bluff. The shoes, as you say, it's L.C. Greenwood. L.C. With the yellow shoes and interesting cliff note. I never knew he played defensive line in college. <laughs> never would have known that. Did you know that, Charlie? Yes. No, you what did. do you think he played? Linebacker? <laughs> <laughs> it is a first down after the 11-yard gain after the 31 on the pass to Arsenault. And there's a pass complete the far sideline to Edward Johnson. Jack Spinks, who this stadium is named after, also was drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers. You see he wore the old number 54 when he was here at Alcorn State, the stadium named after him. And, of course, uh, it's been home to some very big classics here. In fact, when they built this stadium, I think they went 13 straight games without losing the game that was doing the Steve McNair era. Steve was going to beat a lot of folks and <laughs> they're trying to get back to those winning ways here. Pilcher with the carry across the 40 to about the 41 yard line. Let's look at some stadium facts. In fact uh, Jack Spinks in fact was the first black player from the state of Mississippi to be drafted in the National Football League and that came in 1952. Braves won their first 13 games, went undefeated at home their first three years. When I came here, the stadium first came here back in 1980. This stadium was nowhere in the, it wasn't even a dream. <laughs> in fact, Marino Cassim was coaching down here. I know him and his wife, Betty, sitting uh, at their home in Baton Rouge watching the game tonight. Former coach and athletic director here. And here's a pressure and a sack of the quarterback, the second one we've seen tonight. And coming up with the sack for is Tim Turner for all, uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff. You see the blitz coming. Guys getting beat off the line of scrimmage right away. And Tim Turner with a free path to the quarterback did a good job getting him down in the open field making that tackle. A loss of about 10 yards on that sack. And that'll bring up a second down and 20. Ball spotted at the 31 yard line. Working from the shotgun is Buckley. With plenty of time. Wide open and caught. Great catch by Arsenal in the middle of the field for a first down. Across midfield to the 45. It all started with great protection by the front five. Carvalho, Fears, Benson. William Silas doing a good job making a nice pocket. And although Buckley overfired on this pass attempt, Emmanuel Arsenal climbed the ladder. He certainly did, didn't he? I mean, look at this ball thrown high. Look at him go up and get it. Come down with the big grab. Arsenal with the catch. Great concentration. 23 yards on the catch by Arsenal. His fourth reception of the night for 64 yards. 
And here's the quarterback Buckley. He eludes one man in the backfield, but he's not going to get around the corner and get around John Keith. John Keith came up strong from that linebacker spot to make the stop number six. Well, let's take one more look at this catch by Arsenault. What you like is the concentration, and he loses it for a minute, but he grabs the ball and he keeps it away from the ground. So the official couldn't say that the ground knocked the ball out of there. Did a good job of keeping body control and coming down with that catch. Good concentration by Emmanuel Arsenal. You know, they said he's their best receiver. Four catches tonight, two in the previous three games. So he's uh, kind of tripled his performance, hasn't he? Yeah, he? He's made up for the first three weeks of the season. He's having a career game right now. <laughs> Hopefully they keep going and keep feeding him. He's hot. Keep getting him the ball. Second down. After nothing on that last play and this one is complete right at about the 35 yard line and coming up with it is Edward Johnson the sophomore out of Natchez Mississippi defending is Joe Brown number three for Arkansas Pine Bluff and we have the quarterback shaken up on the play and that is Tim Buckley. He took a shot from Johnny Keith coming from the outside as soon as he releases this ball wham he's on the ground gets hit and way to hang in there and hang tough in the pocket but. Keith put that helmet right on those ribs at the quarterback's most vulnerable time while he's extending to make the pass. Well, the backup is Tony Hobson. He's a senior out of Jim Hill High in Jackson, Mississippi. He's capable of running this offense, even though the most dynamic player on this team, according to Ernest Jones, is Tim Buckley. Well, as they tend to Tim Buckley, we're going to take a timeout. Step aside here. From Alcorn State, 228 left in the third quarter, a 10-3 ball game. The Southwestern Athletic Conference is dedicated to offering challenging educational opportunities to talented students and future leaders from all across the world. Founded in 1920, the SWAC and its 10-member institutions of higher learning are committed to building character and champions. Whether in the classroom or on the field of play, the Southwestern Athletic Conference is focused on service, scholarship and shaping the minds of our future leaders the southwestern athletic conference honoring the heritage here we are tim buckley on the sideline got up and walked off under his own power probably just had his bell rung a little wind knocked out of him and tim buckley his stats for the night a touchdown no interceptions came into the game having thrown seven in fact as a a team the three quarterbacks on this all corn team had thrown only 11 interceptions in the first three ball games coming into tonight's contest Tony Hobson is in there now and he's a senior out of Jackson Mississippi 7 of 18 39 yards passing no touchdowns but he has been picked off three times to the season and the game plan changes once Tony Hobson comes in the game he is not going to lead the pocket he's a pocket passer likes to throw so don't look for him to run the ball as often as Buckley did under pressure has a screen pass complete to Johnson or a little not screen pass but a little pass over the middle to Johnson and that's the first down play Tim Turner there defensively I like Number that play call. I like that play call you got your new quarterback in the game you know he's he's a little rusty don't make him make a tough play as see the grass getting stuck in the helmet there but give him a nice easy throw just so the quarterback can find a little bit of a rhythm it is third down. Hobson again hangs in there, has it complete. This time to Arsenault, who's going to be about five or four yards shy of a first down. Arsenault brought down immediately again by Turner, number 39, for Pine Bluff. So Arsenault with a touchdown catch tonight, and that'll bring up a fourth and five situation. OK will come in to punt it away. Fair catch call for and made right at about the 10 yard line by Bruce Peters. And don't forget Saturday afternoon college football continues. On ESPNU is the Central Florida Knights head up north to take on the Eagles of Boston College. College football presented by Allstate. On ESPNU Saturday at 1 Eastern, and the game is also available on ESPNU HD. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Series history between the two. Huh, first time they've ever met. 
Central Florida lost by seven to number 12 South Florida in overtime last week and Boston College coming off of a three point loss to Georgia Tech. First down and 10. Trying to bounce it to the outside is Martel Mallett. And Mallett, who's been bothered with a hip pointer this season, or hip flexor, I should say, and a bad wrist, picks up first down yards. It's a good job by Mallett, Martel Mallett, of running the colors. You know what I mean by running the colors? So often, what running backs do is you're taught to run away from the color. If you see a bunch of purple on one side of the line of scrimmage, then go ahead and cut back to the left. As you see this here, all this purple's flowing hard. Well, he just cut back where he only saw one jersey and it became a foot race. And that's what a good running back can do. They can run to the color and explode and turn on the Jets. Good for about 20 yards on that one. Martell picks up maybe two on this, and that's it. Arkansas Pine Bluff currently has two players or alums who are in the National Football League. Uh, Charles Ali running back with the Cleveland Browns and Dante Wesley, the defensive back from uh, Carolina who didn't play last year. He was out all last season with an injury. But uh, they lost two from their all seven SWAC team and Anton Williams and the punter John Heflin. So they're a little thin in the skin as they say. <laughs> they are and Ali is one of those bruising type fullbacks. So he was able to make it to the NFL playing good special teams and just laying people out. So that's going to be the end of three here on the campus of Alcorn State at Jack Spink Stadium. 10-3, Alcorn has the lead, but Pine Bluff with the ball, and they're starting to move it a little bit. The Golden Lions are roaring. Friday at 5 on ESPNU, women's volleyball, fifth-ranked USC Battles Army. Your car works hard for you. Give it the fuel it wants. The hard-working gas from Phillips 66, specially formulated to clean fuel injectors, reduce emissions, and above all, help maximize mileage with every tank. Keep your car satisfied and help maximize mileage with Phillips 66, hard-working gas. Approaching target now. Sensors detect a more advanced flight technology ahead. Aircraft in sight, origin unknown. The swarm is coming. Havoc Stinger. The biomechanical flying RC from Air Hogs. With bright glowing eyes, Stinger dominates the sky day or night. Its unique airframe and forward center of gravity allows Stinger to perform precision maneuvers in any room. You can take Stinger with you. Running back on the field, I'm looking for daylight and daylight. What I do, what I do, cause I do what I do, like I'm doing it for TV, you need me. Like the apple that the doctor prescribed, transform like more than meets the eye. Mr. Gold Ill, player of the year, head on collision, make a player disappear. And when it's game time, I hold no fear. Yeah, we start the fourth quarter here at Jack Spink Stadium, and there's a score by quarters, Arkansas Pine Bluff. Their only score came in the first quarter on a field goal. Pine Bluff, their only score came in the first quarter on a field goal. After recovering a fumble, they took advantage of it, and went down and scored. And since then, it's been the Braves of Alcorn State. And Javonna Turner is in, a redshirt freshman at quarterback for the, uh, for the Golden Lions of Arkansas Pine Bluff. There he is, a 6 1. 190 pounder from Crosette, Arkansas. Crosette High only played in one game, and he started against uh, Henderson State this year when Moore was injured. Here's a little flip screen pass out in the flat, but not much running room for Martel Mallett after he made the catch because there right away was Lee Robinson. He's been all over the field tonight, hasn't he, Jay? We talked about in the open. He's a football player. You know, to be a good football player, you have to have the ability to run, tackle, and the mental aptitude to understand what the offense is trying to do. And Lee Robinson sniffs out this screen, goes and attacks the ball care. And what you want a good linebacker to do is hit people and make them pay. Leave your feet in his neighborhood. You're going to come up short. You know, Jonathan Moore got injured in their first game of the season against uh, Arkansas Monticello. And... In the second game, Javonna Turner came in and started. They didn't have great success. In fact, lost that game 34-0 to Henderson State. This pass is caught. 
on the near side by Abrams. What a great catch by Abrams. That was a big time throw there. You can see it. Jonathan Moore, he was grimacing in pain with a hand injury. And sometimes football, you know, the most valuable tool you have as a quarterback is going to be your hand. You got to be able to grip the football. And well, he had that injured thumb from the first game of the season, so it may be bothering him some, and that's why we see Turner in there. But that was a big time throw by Turner. We saw Turner during the warm ups and practice. We liked him, didn't oh, we? I thought his arm, he's got a cannon for an arm, as demonstrated by that last throw hitting the, the deep out and he's just a freshman and here's a delay handoff and Mickey Dean has nowhere to run big number 96 is there to make the stop defensively for the Braves of Alcorn State or well, big number 90 I should say Malcolm Taylor one of the things that quarterbacks like to talk about you know Doug Williams and Shaq Harris we always say when we talk about quarterbacks, does he have a ooh wee? <laughs> does he have one of those ooh wee arms? And the first time I saw Turner throw a ball, I said, ooh wee. <laughs> he's got one of those ooh wee arms, and he's just a freshman. He's going to be a great player if he can just learn where to go with the football. But watching him throw the football is a joy to watch. Nice release, natural, with plenty of velocity. Here's the pitch, and now looks like Mickey Dean wants to throw it, and he is going to let it go, and it is caught. Down inside the 30 yard line Mickey Dean on the cat on the throw and Weber with his catch and Weber with his fifth reception of the night a little trickery now and look at the uh, Mickey Dean he's one for one in the passing department <laughs> hey, they got a new quarterback but <laughs> Dean does a good job of getting outside getting outside the pocket sitting there settling giving it everything he has and this is just a great individual effort by Raymond Weber to do a swing move to come back for the underthrown ball there. Good concentration and way to swim the defensive back. Because Ar Arkansas Pine Bluff got away with one because Alcorn State had that play sniffed out. 32 yards on the pass play. And here's Dean going around the right side, but he will not get away from Malcolm Taylor this time. Penalty marker goes down. Flag was thrown deep in the secondary. Arkansas Pine Bluff will play their next four games at home in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Legal block against the offense, number 10. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. They caught Bruce Peters, the wide receiver, senior out of Orlando, Florida. He was guilty. Last year was the SWAC newcomer of the year, number 10. See the cut block, number 10? Yeah, he goes right there. Just went by on the inside, went low on the defensive player, and that's one thing they're really going to enforce. In the ETN was the man he was trying to block, I believe, down there. When you've got defensive players in vulnerable positions where they can't protect themselves. The officials are always going to make the air on the side of caution. So after the long march off of the penalty, it is first and 25 for the Golden Lions. Standing in there. Now taking off and running with it is Javonna Turner. He was sacked nine times against Henderson State. We talked about the fact that they haven't done a good job offensively in the first half. We talked about it of protecting their quarterback. And they were the most sacked team in the Southwestern Athletic Conference a year ago. This year, they're still the most sacked team in the conference. They're consistent. But one of the things about Turner is you really have to appreciate a quarterback that can stay in the game and take that type of punishment and still come back five. Second and 24, he gained one on the last play. And they get it out in the flat on the near side. Little bubble screen as they like to call it. And it is complete to Raymond Weber. Weber has been the big play receiver for him this evening. That is his sixth catch. He came into the game with 16 receptions. He is still yet to get into the end zone. He's fourth in the conference in receiving and third in receiving yards per game. He was a walk on a year ago, but he caught 20 passes. And there's a Fumble. sack and a fumble 
but I believe, well, they're still scrambling down there for it. Alcorn's got it. The Alcorn Braves come up with it. At the bottom of the pile, big number 90, and that is Malcolm Taylor. Here he is out of Brookville, Mississippi, a junior. Taylor did it all here. Take a look at the bottom of your screen. He'll beat his man initially off the ball. Tackle tried to hold him. He got there, got the strip. Good hit on the quarterback, just one-on-one, -on -one. just turned into a speed move, and Taylor just blew by the offensive tackle Weber there, Evan Weber. You got to get in front of that moving locomotive, son. Now on the opposite side, Alcorn with the ball, and they're running it with Antoine Young. You know, what is probably very disheartening for the Arkansas Pine Bluff coaching staff is the fact that that drive started at their own 10. They moved it all the way down to the 40-yard line, then they fumble the ball, and it goes over. They had the trick play, but they took momentum from themselves. Right after the trick play, the very next play, they got a penalty with a, a chop block downfield. So the mental areas, they just got to tighten it up. And when you do that, when you got the offensive unit, they, it's really struggling to put points on the board. You've got to play perfect football. And uh, that's the second turnover of the game for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Neither team has done a good job on capitalizing on the turnovers. And that's something that you have to do. A good team, when you turn over the football, they make you pay right, right away, no doubt about it. And these two teams right now are not showing the abilities to be good teams because they have not learned how to capitalize on their opponent's mistakes. Third down, this pass is complete on the near side, but will it be enough for a first down? It may just be. Good catch by Arsenault. He's their big play receiver. And he picks up number six in the receiving department tonight. So going to be very close. They may have to measure. Tony Hopson's coming here and giving Coach Jones a little offensive spark. And that's the good thing about having a senior as your backup quarterback. Mm -hmm. You know, if the underclassman goes down, then you've got Hopson that's coming in, the senior, ready to do his job and offer a little bit of relief. And so it makes you feel good as a quarterback to know you've got a qualified backup quarterback both teams have gone to their backup quarterbacks because of necessity not because the coaches decided <laughs> to make a coaching uh, a quarterback change you know and that tells you about the defenses that we're watching here tonight these yeah. are physical bunches and they've been putting hits on the quarterback from the opening whistle Arkansas Pine Bluff will play their next four games at home as the first down is game they'll play uh, Alabama A&M Jackson State Prairie View and Lincoln at home so they get a chance to go back home, and Ar Alcorn will play Southern University at home their next game. Then they'll travel to Mississippi Valley and Alabama A&M. We'll get a chance to see Mississippi Valley and Alabama State next week down in Montgomery, Alabama. It is a first down and 10 for the Braves of Alcorn. Can they take advantage of the turnover? Pressure from the quarterback, Hobson, and he scrambles back and makes something out of nothing. Busted play and Hobson did a great job just getting back to the line of scrimmage if he was able to do so. He was he comes out to the right and running back goes to the left. Clearly a busted play there. A good job. Hobson showing a little bit of athleticism and some determination to pick up a couple yards. Alcorn has been held to 39 rushing yards in this game, and that's a, a credit to the defense of Arkansas Pine Bluff because they're ranked 24th in the nation against the run. You know, they can do it. And Alcorn's not a team on paper. You knew they would have difficulty running the football. And this Pine Bluff defense is as good as advertised. And this pass is incomplete out in the flat. Goes incomplete. That's something you don't expect. Having Emmanuel Arsenal drop a ball. You know, they said well, we're going to move him around to get him the football because one thing about him, we know if we throw him the ball, he will catch it. And there's what I was talking about earlier just 39 yards rushing. For the Braves of Alcorn State, Pine Bluff has done a pretty, a better job, I should say, not great job, but 65 yards on the ground. But uh, good defense, Ladarius Anthony and Leachman and Johnson and Hints on that defensive side, line-wise, for Pine Bluff. Plenty of time now for Hobson, but he is going to be sacked back at the 45-yard line, and it's Dorn, Jared Dorn, who came in <laughs> to make this stop defensively. 
think this man doesn't want it. No. You lose your helmet and you still get the quarterback sack. That's grown man football right yeah. there. Derek Dorn, there he is. Give him a leather helmet, he'll still make a tackle. 6'2", 234-pound junior. He is from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Look at that. Loses his helmet on the bull rush and still wrestles the quarterback down. That's highlight film material there. Second punt of the quarter, or the second half, I should say, for Alcorn. And here's Peters back to the 10-yard line on the return. So starting with the second straight possession from their own 10 is Arkansas Pine Bluff. Only 735 remaining. They trail by seven. Is all that stuff drowning the drive to wash and wax your ride? It's time to kick the bucket with Sponge Tech. Now simply soak and squeeze to wash and wax just like that. The Sponge Tech Wash and Wax Sponge uses patented super absorbent polymer technology to clean and wax at the same time. Look inside. Specialized automotive soap and carnauba wax are infused into the sponge's fibers. Then they're activated by water and friction. So just by soaking and squeezing, you get a double beauty shine with one super high-tech sponge. Now simply soak and squeeze to quickly wash and wax cars, trucks, motorcycles, boats, RVs, and more just like that. Say goodbye to mildewy stanch and dirty mess because Sponge Tech has self-cleaning exit-only technology. That means the soap and wax come out but no germs or smells get in. Ditch all those expensive cleaners and dirty rags. Dump sloppy buckets that drag. Now you can soak and squeeze to wash and wax just like that. Call now to order your patented Sponge Tech Wash and Wax Sponge. And during this TV only offer, you'll also get the amazing Sponge Tech Chamois. It absorbs a hundred times its own weight without ever losing shape. Wow! Try your entire vehicle without wringing it out once. Or take it inside to absorb spills anywhere. Plus, you'll also get a detail sponge infused with gentle all-purpose cleaner to make interiors, dashboards, rims, and trim shine like new. You you can even clean patio furniture, vinyl siding, and more. You'll get all this for the incredibly low price of just $19.99. But wait, order right now and we'll triple everything. A $40 value, yours free. You'll get three wash and wax sponges, three chamois, and three detail sponges, all with a 30-day money-back guarantee for just $19.99. Call the number on your screen now to get your sponge tech, the reusable one-step car wash and wax sponge that can be used over eight times. Call right now and we'll triple everything. That's three wash and wax sponges, three chamois, and three detail sponges. You'll get it all for only $19.99. ESPNU College Football Primetime brought to you by State Farm, where great coverage meets great rates. Call, click, or visit and start saving today. The M4, the marching musical machine of the Mid-South. That's from Arkansas Pine Bluff. Under the direction of John Graham, they're enjoying themselves here at Jack Spink Stadium tonight. Their team, though, is down by seven points, and it's a 10-3 ball game. You know, they're talking to the coaches and talking to Ernest Jones and both of these coaches, and we talked a little bit in the first half of where, who influenced uh, Monty Coleman, talked about Joe Gibbs, who he played for with the Redskins and won Super Bowls there with him. And you talk to Ernest Jones, he talks about uh, Brian Kelly, who was his coach or was his, the head coach at Cincinnati, and he was the assistant there. He won two bowl games in the same year under Brian Kelly, and what he was able to do as far as building him to be a head coach. He openly came out and said, That's his mentor. Mm -hmm. He said, I wanted to emulate everything he did, and he's trying to bring that same philosophy down here at Alcorn. Whether you talk about the tempo, the offense, the way you treat players, and getting them in and out of the huddle. He really believes that Brian Kelly's got a secret, a, a secret recipe. It's not a secret anymore. He's doing great things in Cincinnati, but mm -hmm. that's what he's trying to do, and that's the level he's trying to get to. And not a bad mentor to have. You know, I asked him. I said, "What's the biggest adjustment you've had to make from assistant to head coach?" He said, "Coaching the other coaches." <laughs> <laughs> you know, you think about coaching players. He said, "I've got to, as a head coach, you coach the coaches." It is second down. A little swing pass out in the flat, and it is complete. And that is complete to Mario Howard. Now, this is something where you're going to see how much the Arkansas Pine Bluff coaches trust their young freshman quarterback, Turner. You know, you've got a passing situation, third and five. Thus far, they've been keeping 
backs in the backfield protecting him at all costs not allowing any blitz and linebackers to get there so let's see if they're going to stay with a conservative play call or they're going to unleash the playbook and let them go at it three of 12 and third downs for pine bluff tonight a little rush out of the pocket for turner flag is down and it's incomplete it's out of bounds we may have holding the referee through the flag yes it is holding against Pine Bluff, it'll probably probably be declined because it'll bring up fourth down. Clock running out on them, 6:14 remaining. Holding on number 67 on the offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Colton Jones, a freshman from Arlington, Texas, gets to start the night. He's guilty of holding right there. Yeah. As the quarterback leaves the pocket, it just changes the. Uh, protection. So you worry about a guy coming through you, then all of a sudden he starts running away from you. He went out there and grabbed some jersey and got called for the hold. That's an easy penalty for the official to call. So Alcorn unable to take advantage of the two mistakes by Arkansas Pine Bluff. And here's Roderick Williams chasing the ball. It goes out of bounds. 6.08. Is the time remaining here in the fourth quarter on the campus of Alcorn State? We'll be back with more in a moment. changes state farm is there to help you plan ahead and protect what matters most talk to an agent today like a good neighbor state farm is there get set for a women's volleyball action on espnu usc takes its nationally ranked squad to west point to battle army friday at five on espnu now hi welcome to progressive.com how can i help you well i haven't shopped for car insurance in a while and you're worried that you've been paying too much right yeah so how can I know I'm getting a good deal? We can compare your progressive direct rate with other top companies. Wow. Seriously? Yeah. Look at the deal we just got him. That's a new pair of shoes. Yeah, or a big tricked out name tag. Making sure you get a great deal. Now that's progressive. Call or click today. Welcome to Progressive's Concierge Claim Center. You must be Mr. Garcia. I was in a little fender bender. We have your reservation right here. <laughs> Assess the damage, coordinate the repairs, and call you when it's fixed. And it all comes with your policy. Impressive. Call or click today. Tonight's college football game on ESPNU is presented in high definition. And HD on ESPNU continues Saturday afternoon as Central Florida travels up to take on the Eagles of Boston College. College football presented by Allstate on ESPNU comes your way Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern. The game available on ESPNU HD. And for more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Both teams going into that contest at 1-1. One and one. So somebody is going to get an itch. Life after Matt Ryan. <laughs> yes. Boston College starting to rely a little bit more on the defensive side of the ball and having some offensive deficiencies. Here are some key stats in the ball game. Right now, total yards, Arkansas Pine Bluff has the edge and three points off the turnover. Alcorn just 169 yards and a turnover, but they lead it by seven points as they keep the ball on the ground, and it's Antoine Young on the carry. You know, when you look at this week's Sheridan poll, which rates the top HBCUs, the SWAC has three schools in the top ten. Grambling is eighth. Southern comes in at ninth. Panthers of Prairie View, who may be the team to record with in this conference they are bringing up the rear right now at number 10. 
people are talking saying that Prairie View team could be the best team in the SWAC conference. Only time will tell, but I expect them to end up in the top five. Now, I, the only only exception I have to that that lineup, I think Tennessee State should be number one. I think so too. I, I think they're good. And from everybody we've talked to, the coaches have said that Tennessee State's got great athletes and they're going to be a team to beat. And not too many teams will have the ability to beat. I'm not uh, taking anything away from Tuskegee, who is ranked number one, but uh, I don't see Tennessee State being number five. Especially in that Ohio Valley Conference. <laughs> we had a chance to do an Ohio Valley Conference game last week. That's, that's a tough conference. So the penalty flag is going to march Alcorn back a little bit. They still have the, the ball though with the clock 521. Arkansas Pine Bluff has got to think about getting the ball back. But they have not been able to move the ball down the field tonight. And here they are, the top 10. Here's Prairie View. Next opponent, they'll be at Mississippi Valley on Saturday. Southern University takes on Alcorn next week. The last hold the penalty was declined. That penalty was declined. Grambling will be up against Jackson State on Saturday up in Jackson, Mississippi. Hampton takes on the Aggies of North Carolina A&T at home. Albany State travels up to Columbia, South Carolina to take on Benedict. And we'll come back to the rest of the top 10 in a moment. Running to the left is Hobson. Let's it go. Has a complete far sideline out of bounds is Arsenault. Arsenault with another catch tonight. And for him, that's number seven. That's a big time throw by Tony Hobson. You know, what he was doing was rolling to his left, and then he had to rush the throw. And anytime you have to rush that throw, look how quickly he turns his shoulders. He's rolling to the left. Oh, here comes somebody. I'm going to get hit. Turn my shoulders real quick. Release the ball with accuracy. So he had to make a split second decision to get rid of that football ahead of schedule and still threw an accurate ball. Now goes back to they declined that penalty. Now, you know, that was an 11 yard game game the first down. You know, that's <laughs> kind of interesting, wasn't it? I think so. And you know, this game is definitely still there for the taking. It's just a matter of who's going to step up and make and a big there play. There's a big play being run that time by Brumfield. First time we've seen him tonight. Brumfield, a sophomore from Flowood, Mississippi. Let's take a look at the rest of the top 10 and the Sheridan Pole, Tennessee State, the next opponent, Eastern Kentucky, one of the top favorites in the conference. South Carolina State will be at Clemson. That's a tough matchup for them on Saturday. Norfolk State will be at William and Mary. They don't have to travel far for that one. While Delaware State will be at Central Connecticut on the 27th in two weeks. And number one team. That game will be on ESPNU Saturday night at 1130 against Stillman down in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. First down play and carrying the pile. Finally, the whistle blows, but not wanting to go down is Mr. Brumfell again. Where's he been all evening? They should have put him in there earlier. He's coming there with some hard determination and running very well and surprising. He's a very physical type runner. And I thought he would have been the more finesse back because of his background as being such a talented baseball player. Yeah. We know baseball it. players aren't known for being the toughest guys in the world, but he's coming out of the shortstops. But he's a center fielder. <laughs> he's a center fielder, so he's got the outfit as big talent. <laughs> it is second down. We'll call it three after that seven yard run. So he's had two long gains here. And now they give it back to him again. He's met in the hole, though by a couple gold jerseys not much running room for him that time Brumfield puts coach Jones in an interesting position I mean he's a guy that you could count on being a great running back if you got time to develop him but he was quite honest saying I don't know how long I'm gonna have him <laughs> you know he said he yeah. keeps, you know he's gonna get drafted for baseball he's been drafted once before and will probably be drafted again I think he's been drafted twice already he's a red shirt sophomore on the football field so he's just one of those guys that he says he's an outstanding baseball player. We could see him in the major leagues one day. Well, he led the team in rushing a year ago with 220 yards, and he has the ball fumble, fumble. and it's picked up by Pine Bluff. Let's see if they I held on to it, it. I think he lost it again. You think so? <laughs> he had it and somehow got that ball between his legs and a well, let's see. Corn State guy might have been able to get to it. I haven't wait. I'm waiting for the referee to give me a signal. They're down there trying to umpile everyone. It's just a pull and tug match right now. Who wants it more? Oh, Alcorn comes out with the ball. They're looking for it. Look, <laughs> my, my man's got it. <laughs> 72 <laughs> has the ball. The ball. They're still looking. They're still for looking it. in the pile. They still haven't pointed who has the ball. 
Now it said fourth down. I guess Alcorn kept the ball. Boy, that was interesting. Jerry Salas, the freshman offensive lineman, was the man who came out with the ball. Let's look at it once again. Brumfield just drops it. Yeah, he's, he, look, he's got the ball, and then somehow he just doesn't get it cleanly. So they're going to try a field goal. This will be a 37-yard field goal attempt to make it a 13-3 ball game. Richardson, he's hit one already this evening for the Braves of Alcorn from 37 yards out. This will be another one from 37 yards out. Did we have some movement or timeout? Timeout was called by Alcorn. Maybe they were trying to draw them off sides. They were, you know, they waited a long time. That was a fourth and about five situation. And maybe they were thinking that uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff was going to jump. Either way, it's a timeout call. Just 2.02 is the time remaining in the ball game. And Alcorn will probably attempt a field goal when we come back. At eHarmony, we pre-screen each and every member for you to determine your matches based on compatibility. Aren't you curious to see who you'd be matched with? Log on today and review your matches for free. eHarmony.com If you think all batteries are the same, consider this. When even the firefighters have to get out, they depend on the T-Pass 3 communicator. And packed inside every T-Pass is the only battery they trust. Duracell. Trusted everywhere. Introducing the all-new Nissan Maxima. It has an award-winning 290 horsepower V6 engine, an intelligent CVT transmission, and a masterfully crafted interior designed around the driver. The breathtaking Nissan Maxima, the four-door sports car. Lease a new 2009 Nissan Maxima for $339 a month for 39 months. Hi, I'm Paul. I'm an insurance customer. I never knew auto insurance could make me feel... <laughs> so animated? With electronic documents and automatic renewal, insurance makes it easy to take care of my auto insurance, so I don't have to think about it. Um... Because there's no paperwork, insurance customers have saved thousands of trees. And you've also helped plant over 20,000 more. I can really save some green with insurance. Now that's something to get animated about. Take a fresh look at your auto insurance. Get your quote from insurance today. The phone company has an important message for its customers. Don't listen to Vonage. Well, over 2 million people have already joined Vonage. Oh, really? With Vonage, you get award-winning service quality with unlimited local and long-distance calls for just $24.99 a month. Unlimited for just $24.99? Are you having trouble keeping track of what your phone company is charging? With Vonage, your rate starts low and stays low. Sign up now with Vonage and get one month free. Call 1-877-4-VONAGE or go online today. Jay, how often does the coach ice his own kicker? <laughs> you know, during that timeout, Taylor Richardson was walking around with a lot of thoughts on his mind. Let's see if this didn't backfire. 37-yard attempt. He missed a 33-yard in the first half. Hit a 37-yard in the start the second half. This one's as the distance, and this one is good. So he's hit two 37-yarders tonight for the Braves of Alcorn, and that gives them a 13 to three lead. So it's a two-score game here. And this one had the distance. It was straight through the uprights. Good job for the for the freshman. Richardson, he scored the last six points for the Braves of Alcorn on a pair of 37-yard field goals. This one coming with a minute 57 remaining in the fourth quarter. So often when the team comes out and makes a big kick, they end up giving back plenty of yardage with special teams. So now it's very important that the special teams keep their focus. They did a good job on the field goal. Now let's make sure you continue to do a good job with kickoff coverage and don't allow Arkansas Pine Bluff to get a big return. That was an eight-play, 30-yard drive. They used 411 off the clock. That was the, the most important thing is they, they used some time off the clock and they put points on the board. And I think, you know, by getting, almost lost the fumble. <laughs> by, by, by getting those three extra points, you really do put Arkansas Pine Bluff in desperation mode. 
You know they want to run the football. Now running's out the picture. They've got to come out and throw, and they've got a freshman quarterback in there, so things are really looking good for the Alcorn State Braves. I would probably script kick this one. I wouldn't give him a chance to run it back. It's a short kick. It'll come to one of the up men, a linebacker. He fumbles it. And let's see who has it. It may be Alcorn. I thought he got back on top of it, but again, we wait for the officials to give us a signal. There's a, a tug of war going on at the bottom of that pile. And it's Arkansas Pine Bluff maintaining possession. Big number 52, I believe it was Timber, was the man who fielded it, coughed it up. There he is, the 6'1", 230-pound freshman. Well, let's look at some of the key plays from the night. It started early off. And that put uh, three points on the board with this hit, Jay. Yeah, defensive came out and got physical early and often and they kept hitting the quarterback and the defense is really dominated in the first half and it was that type of night all the yards are tough to come by and all corn state came up with the big play with the touchdown throw from Moore. pardon me for the touchdown throw from Buckley to Arsenault and then field goals became the story of the day and Taylor Richardson grew up here before our very own eyes and that one's knocked down good defense by Lee Robinson to get his hands in there. Danny Evans was the intended receiver number 81 but 56 came across from his linebacker spot. He has been all over the field tonight in pass coverage. He's been uh, stopping the run and everything. He's done nothing to hurt his draft stock. That's for sure. If you ask me I think he's elevated it showing you all the things that you have to have from a great linebacker speed leadership. See, he knows when to cheer now. He's getting yeah. going. He got the leadership qualities. And He'll probably be the drum major if he's not, <laughs> not careful. <laughs> it is second down and 10 after the incompletion. Ivana Turner has stepped in at quarterback for Pine Look Bluff, out. and he's going to be sacked. Brought down in the backfield. And that's Turner on the stop defensively. They're trying to do some type of hurry up offense, but that clock not their friends. So I think they re finally realized they were letting the clock tick off and they called a timeout and had to use a timeout. Now one of the things and we talked to Ernest Jones yesterday and his concerns was he was hoping that the team would not let down if something negative happened and they had to play good defense. But keep the defense off the field. That means the offense had to, to maintain the ball because he said in the previous games he's been seeing his defense on. Not that they played badly, but they stayed on the field too long. And ultimately, they protected the football. They did a pretty good job of protecting the football and not allowing the turnover to really hurt them at all. So well, that's what you want. You just want teams to grow. So cut down on your mental mistakes, hold on to the football. And if you got a good defense, hang your hat on it and let your defense win some games. No. Oh. Both coaches came into tonight's game looking for their first career wins and right now a minute and 32 seconds separates Ernest Jones from his first win. And now another sack of the quarterback Malcolm Taylor this time brings him down number 90 and that'll bring up fourth down. And that's just a young quarterback there not realizing the situation and he's in a situation that's foreign to him. You don't get sacked on back to back plays. I understand if it's a jailbreak and everybody's coming but he's got a little time to slide in the pocket. You know just step up slide around move to the left. That pocket presence is not there. He's got a rifle arm but he doesn't know when to leave the pocket when to slide around in the pocket and where to go and you just can't get sacked twice on back to back plays in a two minute hurry up offense type of situation. So they're going to go for it on fourth and 16. They uh, have to pick up a first down. They have to get all the way out to the 40 yard line or the 39 yard line to get the first down. Let's it go and it's incomplete. If it had been caught, it would have been enough for first down. The ball goes over on downs. The intended receiver, Anthony Abram, just couldn't come up with the catch. The sophomore out of Chicago, Simeon High. So now all the Braves of Alcorn have to do is run the clock out. They have two timeouts left. That is Arkansas Pine Bluff, but it'll be to no avail here at the end. Alcorn coming up on their schedule. Southern University will be their next opponent. 
That'll be September 27th, so they get a little break here. Not long, though. <laughs> What's going on down there in Baton Rouge? Pete Richardson, people aren't really talking up the Jaguars. I think he's up to some. When you take them for granted, that's when they come out and get you. Then they go to New Mexico State, Mississippi Valley, and Alabama A&M, so they have a pretty rough road stretch ahead of them as they keep the ball on the ground and gain nine yards running straight ahead with Joshua Brumfield. But Arkansas Pine Bluff goes home for four straight games. Alabama A&M, Jackson State, Prairie View, and Lincoln before hitting the road against Southern and Grambling. So that schedule is very favorable in terms of you get to go home four weeks in a row, get some home cooking, and got that new stadium field house that they're so proud of out there in Pine Bluff. And they back into that schedule. You're going to take on Southern and Grambling back-to-back -back weeks. Not an easy task at all. And that water's never felt so good for you. <laughs> I'm sure it has. First career win. Yeah. Congratulations, and you hug it out with your staff. They worked hard for it. Well, he said he learned how to coach the coaches. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you see the bucket coming up and over the top. He didn't even fly. Oh, he's too cool. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations to Ernest Jones. His first career win, of course, I'm sure for Monty Coleman. We'll see some wins on his side of the ledger also. He's the 19th coach at Arkansas Pine Bluff. The final score, 13 to 3. You see the two coaches there giving a hug. Hard fought contest, great defenses on both teams. Young programs on the rise, hopefully. Once again, our final score 13 to 3. Coming up next, we'll send you to our Sports Center U studio, Beth Moens and Charles Arbuckle. More information, log on to your home for the finest in college sports, ESPNU.com. For Jay Walker, Charlie Neal saying so long from Alcorn State in Mississippi.